Good afternoon. Welcome to the Mancunian Way. How are you? Hope you are well. And uh, welcome back to Thursday night chat. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you? Hello, Martin. All's well, thank you. Ozzy, how are you, mate? I hope you're well. Yeah, not too bad. Thanks, Pat. Martin. Uh, Martin. Yeah. You, you know it's evening, yeah. <clears throat> not afternoon. Afternoon, evening. We'll say. Um, anyway, so anything you want to talk about? <laughs> Not a lot to talk about, to be honest, is there? Nothing's happened. Yeah, no. it's a quiet week, isn't it? Yeah. Nope. Talk quiet anyway. week. <laughs> Let's say some hellos to everyone and then we'll get rolling. Oh, loads are in already. Uh, must be a quiet week. Good evening, Michael Fina. Yeah, I saw the Goldbridge video. Absolute no bad. Nothing else to it. Completely on no bad. Hasn't got a clue about FFP. Then again, looks like no one's got a clue with FFP because it's going bye bye. You all wanted Monopoly? Yeah, might be getting your Monopoly uh, between two teams, though. Mike Goldbridge and the, yeah, uh, I'm like, Michael, I know, appreciate it, but I'm not giving the guy any airtime. The guy's boring. Just your you spot and he's boring. But we do appreciate your feedback. Rory Jennings, yeah, the same. Absolute. Clown. Yeah. I'm glad you put that as a, Don't care about Man United, what they're one of the rest we live in. The now exactly spot on. Um, we subscribe to this brilliant channel. If you haven't, tell your fellow City supporters about the channel. Let's get the man weight up to five subs 5k subs thank you mate much appreciated um michael feeney wishing everyone a massive hello something special is coming i chat bullshit i chat bullshit apparently steve well we all know that yeah i mean that's that's yeah. obvious i chat a lot of bs wait and see I mean, I'm not the kind of person to say I told you so, but yeah, you are. That comes later on. Might have you bought your ticket for Wembley? Yep, yeah, bought it last week. I did. I, did, I tried booking Real Madrid parking today as well. I'm presuming did the did it go on open sale to season ticket holders today? I don't know. Um, I'm on the cup scheme. Don't so. know. I couldn't even get a ticket for the game, let yeah. alone a car parking space. Is it when you mentioned out? that, I thought you were oh, going to no, say no, it sold out in two minutes again. He's on about the Chelsea game, I think. Mm. Good evening. When you, when you just mentioned that, I thought you were going to say it sold out in two minutes again. Yeah, I don't think we're better talk tickets because, um, yeah, just mm. going to upset a few people. Good evening, yep. DC. Hope America is doing you well. Mingy Wong is saying hello. It trust the game is so mid. Listen. Chelsea United, even that Liverpool game tonight was there. I honestly thought Liverpool were going to go out and smack them about 6 0. We shouldn't be waiting 20 minutes to score to, to score the lead goal after you know going back 1 1. What from when it went to 1 1 to 2 1, they had to wait, to, took 20 minutes from the score the second goal against that Sheffield team. Come on. Oh, everyone just saying don't listen to Goldbridge. <laughs> Good evening, Tristan. How are you? Rich is just having technical difficulties with the Wi-Fi. So Rich may appear on his phone. Sorry, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I've, I've, I've now, no, Rich, I've now got Windows 11. So I'm now getting notifications up on my phone and my WhatsApp's now connected and it's flashing up on my screen and destroying my stream out which i didn't know it could do um where are we at dc i know oh, that just reminds of dc blue heart is in the building good evening fellow blues great to see another stop putting here to hat trick we're gonna start with mm -hmm. a lot very very soon people just cannot accept us they can't i can't wait to get into this ffp with it later on I frigging can't wait because I hope he's read about it. Because let's see if he's sitting on his moral high ground this evening. Oh, great. Um, I thought we need another Martin and Rich rant. No, there's going to be no rant. 
Yeah, Morning, so, Mount High Ground. Yeah, there's more more chance of of uh, you know um, Ollie Watkins getting a hat trick in the game up last Wednesday than Martin staying calm once it's put to him. <laughs> I'm calm, Rich. And guess you what? And Ollie and Watkins didn't what you get a hat trick. You and Alan are getting what you want. It looks like it. Yeah. Well, actually, it doesn't because I don't even know that I agree with the luxury tax. But anyway. No, no Rich, because what's going to be is a two team league. We're, we're going to become the Bundesliga because there's only two teams going to win the league now. Um, Stockport. Sorry, Stockport. <laughs> Bro, I was, I was, is Chelsea United still playing? It was. It was. It was Fergie time when you came so. when we came on here. Still going. Love being back at the AM for the Villa game last night. Didn't get home till two AM. <whistles> wow. Go on, lad. I hope you had a great time. Good evening mm. to you. Good evening. That's, that's, that's some. I don't know if I like that name or I do like the name. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, do go and subscribe over to Eight Games and Night Three Twenty Podcast. Spot on, Michael Fina. Good evening, SOS. How are you? Charlie's in the building. Sean C's in the building. Pardo's giving us the update to the United game. PKMCFC. Hi, everyone. Big all. ITK info about some imminent chance. I might have heard something. No, um, it was more Pep's contracts renewal. Um, Jesus, Chelsea just letting United play circles around them. Uh, watching darts at the minute. I'll be back soon. I mean, don't let don't let us interrupt your your darts there, Charlie. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, way more interesting than us, Paul. The guy's a prick for blaming us for losing another two points. It's all right, Goldbridge. Yeah, everyone's like Goldbridge and Brown. Alan didn't want to hear the burning news. I don't think he's seen it. Penalty, Chelsea. Oh hello, Chelsea. Had a mess. Got a penalty. Cole, Cole Palmer's going to take it. Oh, um, God. Well. GA man's here. GA man's here. Hugh Bello, great game last night. We're going to get into it. Evening Blues, one down, eight to go. I love that. We're winning this title, I'm telling you. G Papa, 87, Evening Blues. So you'll all be crying in about eight weeks. Uh, can't wait for City versus Madrid. I'm in the North Stand. I'm in the South Stand. I've swapped. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm in one, 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 one. Three, three. Yeah. Good. Shocker. 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 I'm not the ITK. If anyone's new, uh, hello MCFR. Go over and subscribe to MCFR TV as well. Superb Can channel. About, answer me the question. How many goals Carl Palmer scored not from the penalty spot? One. I have no <laughs> idea. I'm just guessing. I mean, I know he scored loads from the penalty spot, but like... Anyway, should we get into it? I will get back to everyone's comments in a moment because you're all legends. Uh, I'm Sounds just like going to have to dogs Rich, to, uh... the, the dogs, I love your dogs, Rich, but not when we're just making random noise, mate. Uh, right, let's get into it. Manchester City 4. What I think we'll do is, with the news that's coming out tonight, let's do Villa and Palace as a one whole topic. Because I think we'll move from Villa into Palace. So Manchester City have finally beaten a top four team this season. Woo! Uh, very convincingly. Loads of changes. Um, on the back of the result last night, ladies and gentlemen, apparently Haaland is crap, needs to go back to the bench or League Two, was Alan's words. KDB's got to be put out to pasture. Again, Alan's words. Um, when Alan comes oh. on, I want you to all explain to him. I'll ask him how he thinks Gundogan has been far more influential for Manchester City than KDB has been. 4-3 Chelsea. Piss off. I'm serious. Cole Palmer just scored off a deflection. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> They're like the club that keep on giving out. Oh, you got to love it. Wow. <laughs> like, who gives more? United or Alan? Who gives you the more comedy? I don't know. Yeah. I might, I might stick How up you to Alan. yourself? Yeah, I might stick up to Alan a little bit <laughs> on the second point because I do think Gundogan is. is oh, don't you dare it. say that, Rich, to try and be no, edgy. No, 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 it's not being edgy. I think if you look at the really important moments, it's like <laughs> it's like Yaya Torre. It's like the Yaya Torre David Silva argument. Yaya Torre 
was involved in more big moments, really whoa, whoa, big whoa, moments whoa, for stop, me. Rich, Rich. And I'd say Gundogan. Yaya David Silva argument. Because is well, uh, that an argument who, going on in your no, head? <laughs> no, no. Who, who reached the greater peak? Who was the most influential in those early David years? Silver. No, David see, Silva. David uh, Silva and KDB. David Silva is better. David Silva is a better player than Yaya. He he played for ten and years. KDB's he's more the most, influential. He's the most popular popular ever. But was Silva more influential? In night in 2011 to 14, I don't know that he was in that three year period over 10 years by a mile. And Gundogan, when you look back at the moments, you will see if you look at the biggest moments in City's history, you will see more Gundogan than De Bruyne. I don't know, Martin, he may have a point here. The goals at the crucial moments, things like that. Gundogan was like Yaya. He was a big moment player and incredibly important. De Bruyne was like Silva, much played for much longer, overall a better player, no doubt. And overall will go down higher in the list of City's players. But in those highlight reels of great moments, I think Gundogan and Yaya, were, you know, just have had so many you know what we need to do Rich? We need certainly to an argument to be our most clutch players definitely our most clutch yeah, we, need to cut off his, we need to cut off the statue's head of david silver and just put a yaya torre well yeah yeah you know no I mean? I mean david silver until phil faden overtakes him which is going to happen david silver will be my favorite ever city player and i'd say 60 70 percent of city fans certainly over 30 David Silva's probably their favourite most loved player and he, yeah. he was phenomenal for nine nine seasons. So No, but you'd you rather know, have someone who yeah, yeah. run to the pitch, score a goal and have a lie down for twenty five minutes because he was knackered. I'm just so saying that for those oh, great I moments uh, I disagree with you. Your opinion for those Rich, great moments. Okay. We're gonna tell have, me when I'll tell you what, we're gonna have a debate for the yeah, end of the yeah, season on this. Should we bring back debates where we're going but, teams on this? But what's the debate though? Because yeah. no one's it's saying no. De Bruyne's no. be not better than Gundogan. No words, Just saying in the big moments. Alan, we'll do a debate of who was more okay, influential. But, but Alan's talking. No, no, so you're I'd agreeing. Say, you just said K uh, yeah, yeah, I was more influential than David Silva. Between eleven and fourteen. Not overall on City the club. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't there when we had the Centurions and Silva did that. But in those crucial first three years, Yaya was our most influential player. You know, semi-final, final, run into the league, run into the league in 14. It was Yaya who, in those big moments, cup finals, you name it. And that's what I'm saying. I'm thinking saying Yaya in the 93-20. Silver's bad. Two, Silver's, two, goals, yeah, away off top two, goal, two goals away at Newcastle was, was probably the, his most his we'll biggest, biggest top performance top that season. Gent. Yeah, yes, Rich, yeah. you want to go an hour and a half? Can we try and stay on the tops tonight? I promise you, we'll do a debate. We're going to teams, we'll do a debate, and then I will absolutely wreck you and Alan to death. Yeah, but obviously, anyone who's got with the hyperbole Alan will come out with, you, um, you want Alan on your team, it's Rich? not going to happen. No, no, it's a, anyway, it's no, a different I need discussion. To super chat, Rich. DC, we need to stage an intervention for Alan and Rich. Rich okay, I look forward oh, to you right. did not. Yeah, I look forward to you denying all the big moments from Gundogan and Yaya ever happened. I really do. It's like Callum from The Hangover. Oh dear. Right. Anyway, um, so City beat Villa uh, four one. Um, Ozzy, what did you think, mate? Uh, boring game, wasn't it? Really. Not a lot to talk about. Um, I, the thing I, I think needs to be started with is um, the lineup. I mean, no one guessed that lineup. Nobody. And if you did, you're a liar. Like, you did not, Martin, guess that lineup. Well, I guessed eight of them. Well, you didn't guess them all, though, did you? The only so... thing I got wrong was Doku and Grealish together. Well, we can't. We we talked about that before, didn't we? We didn't think it was a good idea, but it worked out in the end. But no, yeah. So the lineup for me was kind of a shocker. 
Um, I was uh, I was at work at the time and I saw the saw it come up and I was just like, what? Harland on the bench? Is he injured? What what's going on? KDB another you know injury? So for me that was the shocking moment. Um, and then as the game unfolded. Just a masterclass from Foden. Um, we're starting to run out of, of words for Foden. Even though he's 23 years old, he's won everything now. Um, and, you know, one of the commentators was, was saying that, you know, he reminds him of. Um, just got out of my head. It's not bad. But he, he, he was basically saying, you know, Paul Gascoigne, that's what he was talking about. Um, and I was just thinking, like, Foden's legacy, if he continues this rate, not only will he become probably City's best ever player, but he could be, like, up there with the greats of the Premier League. I mean, the ceiling is just immense for, for him. You know, his talent is undeniable. And for me, he deserves to be the Premier League's um, player of the season by far. There, there just isn't anybody that's that's even close. You know, I'm, I'm sure gonna, I'm going to come out with a hot take on you in a minute. That's my new word for today, <laughs> by the way. Hot take. Yeah, I, Do you know I, I was thinking. Uh, was yeah. actually man average in the first half. Do you know? I'll see. Second the, half. The one thing. Five. The one thing, and, and Martin will probably want a debate on this as well, but you know, I was thinking the other night that Phil Foden is younger now than David Silver and Kevin De Bruyne were when they signed for C. And he has achieved everything as a head start on Kevin De Bruyne and, and David Silver, who, you know, universally, if people were arguing about City's greatest player would be of the modern era, apart from, you know, Colin Bellow, if you go back to earlier, They'd argue Silver and Kevin De Bruyne. Phil Foden is going to have won 20 trophies and scored 100 goals and played 350 games or whatever at the age that Silver and De Bruyne signed. So he, by 27-28, is going to have matched or bettered their legacy if he carries on the way he's going. And if he stays at City all his life... He's going to have done what they did, but for twice as long. I mean, it, it, he really is, um, you know, limitless in that sense. And, and if you, I know people will always say, oh, De Bruyne and, you know, still people say De Bruyne and Silva are better than Phil Foden. But honestly, with David Silva and De Bruyne this good at their site, at the time they first joined, in their first few months, in their first six months, I, I think Foden... You know, it's going to go on unless some unless injuries or circumstances change. There's, he's got to be a huge favourite to go on and become our greatest, our greatest legend. He because is a generational it, talent. It's incredible. He, it's incredible. Yeah, he right, is. He, and, and I think it's been, it's been a while since like uh, a city player as as you can utter those words. You know, and you think of the, the great players we have had, um, but for him to be homegrown, you know, to come from the academy, um, yeah, and to be a fan, be a ball to be boy, a himself, yeah. yeah, all of that, you know, it's just, it, it's, I don't think we fully appreciate Foden, and I know Martin, you kind of said that he was quite in the first half. Yeah, I agree with you, but I do think the problem for Foden is that he is. For me, the reason he came into the, the second half is because he's been played out on the wide way too much like, over the last few games. And I think Pep has really got to say now it's time for him to be in the midfield. And I know there's going to be, like Martin may say it, Rich may say it, Pat may say it, you can't have Foden and Kevin De Bruyne in the midfield. I think Pep has just got to find a way. Because for me, they're two of the best midfielders, not only in the Premier League, but in all of Europe. 
And you just yeah, I mean, I would agree. The only thing I would say, we'll come to your part on this in a minute, is when we get to the transfer part, that's where you're going to struggle. Well, it all depends on who we bring in, isn't it, really? And we'll get on to that no, later I on. I said but... Bukai's not coming in on a bench. And Nab is the other midfielder beside him. Yeah, but we're going to play 70 games next season, maybe 80. So There's only, there's only two or three extra games, yeah. to be fair. There's a lot of players who've played too much football this year. Like no, 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 I agree, Rich, but Faden I'm just saying. played too much football. I, yeah. I, I don't think you're ever going to get Foden and KDB together in the mid like that. Well, no, but and I think, and Martin, you, you could also think that because Foden is such a versatile player, and so is Kevin De Bruyne, you know, he can go out on the wing and he can launch those balls, you know, across into the box for, for Harland. I think with our, with our players, it's so fluid. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it's amazing how honestly, versatile they are. Honestly, yeah. You know, in the, in the biggest of big games, I'd play them together. But in the in most of the league games we got left, I'd rest one of them because I I just think that Phil is twice the player when De Bruyne doesn't play, and I think De Bruyne's best football this season, and there hasn't been that much of it because of injury and getting fit and everything else. Which you know, Alan says getting out to pasture. I say it's about getting De Bruyne back physically and mentally to his peak, which clearly takes more and more time as you get older. But, you know, at the moment, I I wouldn't, on Saturday, I'd rest, I'd rest one of them. If you go, if you want Kev against um, Madrid, I'd, I'd rest him on Saturday and play Phil in the middle. If you think you're not going to use Kev in Madrid, which seems unlikely, you, you, you know, you rest Phil, give him some rest because at the moment they are, we, we are losing half of Phil when he plays with De Bruyne and doesn't go in the, and he goes out wide. He's still a world-class player. He's still a brilliant player. And he gets the, you know, if it was a Champions League final, you'd play both. But just in a Palace game, I reckon we'd be better giving one Ooh, of them. Who was there? The was it just I, I, I knew it was a United fan. Confirmed on TV now. Scumbag. Well, he, had a, he had a United shirt on as a kid, so... Back. Kept it quite while he was at City, though, didn't he, Rich? Well, he, he never said anything. Like, there's been a few City fans at United. They never said a word. Bloody hell. I love the way Rich goes all PC. Sorry. Well, like, J Jamie Carragher's an Everton fan, allegedly. No, he's but, not. You know. That soon disappeared, Rich. Don't believe that. Yeah, but that's what I mean. There's, there is a lot of there is a lot of um, people are fans um, are they really really should shoot more? Could get Pat. What do you think of last night? And then we'll bring in Misery Guts, who thinks Gundogan's a far better player than KDB because he's got hot takes, but very, very little ball knowledge. Carry on, Pat. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting that lineup. Um, but for those who you know, for those who thought that maybe Harlan needed a rest or KDB needed a rest on, on Pat, when I saw it on paper, it looked um. It was, um quite reassuring um yeah um yeah so i, I didn't expect it but it, I, I, it looked on paper it looked really really good um from the get-go um yeah takes i can take from the match yeah it didn't it didn't seem like foden really grew into the match until you know leading up to the free kick um but uh not saying he wasn't it was a poor or anything um what else can i note too i think i said to you guys in the group chat i said I've never. I can't remember the last time I saw a club give Rodri that much space. Whether he was picking up the yeah. ball in the six role, or he was forward in the eight, and that they were they were playing against him like they were scared of him. It was it was it was so bizarre to see, especially a, a team like Villa. And you've got to respect them. They had what they're doing this season is is pretty pretty impressive. So that really yeah. that that for me that just looked like it was like if they if they're going to give Rodri that much space in a six, I can kind of understand it because then you can basically you know, put all, your, put all your resources towards trying to shut down passing lanes in midfield and things like that. But he's bombing so much further forward now. He's almost playing like a, a, a you know, he's almost playing like a, 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 a like a second Gundogan sort of role in a way. And they still gave him so much room to move and, th and, and, and everything. And yeah, I was just really surprised. And, and to be honest with you, like I look at that first goal, the cutback from Doku for Roger to shoot, it was almost like a really soft, a soft way to, uh, you know, concede a goal. 
not just from the manner in which they that, that they conceded it, but also at what time in the game they also conceded it. You know, we weren't even we weren't even like you know 15 minutes into the match, and you know you're able to leave a midfielder so open in the 18 yard box to convert a goal. I just yeah, I, I, I thought I, I, initially I thought the floodgates were going to open, but credit to Aston Villa, they fought back and. Um, well, I think that challenge from Diaz, uh, sorry, Douglas Luiz on um, Alvarez before before they ran the other end of the pitch and scored a goal was a bit was a bit suspect. It looked on replay it looked a bit suspect. You can't really take much away from the goal itself. You know, Diaz was slightly offside, but you know, Duran did a great job being able to convert it past past Ortega on a, on a very tight angle. So you can't really take much away from that. But um, no, look, I, I felt confident. You know, even if we were only one one going to the second half, I was confident with how we how we were looking or how we were playing in that too. Um, and then, yeah, we just, we just turned on the arm. Absolutely. Do you, and do you know what? Um, do you know the funny thing, Pat? I was almost at the end of the game thinking that our best player had been Rico. I thought he was abs. I thought, I think in both the last two games against top, top teams, mm. yeah, top four teams, I think he's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. His ability to go, you know, you, you've, We've seen a Kanji try it this season, and Kanji's been one of our better players this season, so I'm not having a go at him. But Rico goes into that role in midfield. He does it, you know, as as well as Stones. He's nowhere near the defender and the experienced and all-round player that Stones is, so I'm not trying to say he's better than Stones or whatever, but he slides into that meal midfield as easily as Stones does, and he does it beautifully, and he's got fantastic touch he's he's got you know almost after Foden that ability to get in between the lines and turn and you know he, he nearly set up that you know would have been goal of the season with a you know was it against that against uh you know where he did that turn outside the box and, and brought it through um and you know I thought Rico was superb I thought Doku um yeah, we've just got to work with Doku to, to get the best out of him because I've not seen another player in the game who can, from a standing start, beat a fullback in two metres and get a crossing. And he did it three or four times against Villa. He's still yeah. in the area standing. I've, I've missed seeing Doku. The defenders, I wish, I wish the defenders a metre in front. Yeah. And, and he can just... And, you know, I think Henri said it before he signed for us that, you know... It, it, you just there's nothing you can do against him in a standing start, but that's incredible. But we've got to help him become better at crossing, and we've also got to help our players attack maybe attack the near post more because you saw Rodri do it with the goal, attack the near post, and it wasn't a complicated ball for Doku, he mm -hmm. was able just to you know to pull it back a bit. And Rodri at the ball. We've got to think about how much to more do defending because a, a, a team yeah. about Aston Villa's quality this season shouldn't be conceding goals like that that early in the game. No, I I, I agree. But yeah. so so for me, you know, the man of the match. Obviously, everyone seems to give it to Foden. But Rodri and and Rod Rodri was my Lewis, shout after Foden. Yeah, he, yeah I, th I think they were there. And and you know, to be honest, I thought Grealish had a great game. I you know, I thought you know, I'll tell you what, pretty Grealish, much. What two players who worked really well together was Grealish and uh, Guardiol. Mm -hmm. I think Guardiol had a really good game as well. So, so yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he's uh, against Arsenal too. He's, uh, he's, um, Guardiol's. Can you know, someone talk about Alan's boy before the bottom lip comes seriously out? His bottom lip is hanging out here. I'm out uh, before we come to Mr. Misery Goats. Yeah, his bottom lip's on the ground. Always, I presume you mean Goldbridge, mate. Thank you for the two pound. He always looks like a wrong and now I know why. Go on, Alan. We're not talking about Bernardo. Let's all laugh at United. Let's all laugh at United. Ah, ah, ah. Let's all laugh at United. Let's all laugh at United. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, mate, that was fucking brilliant. I was sat there in the in the in the cafe having a coffee, watching it on my phone. All right, when 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 Palmer scored the winning goal, I was absolutely killing myself laughing. I couldn't stop laughing at all. What a beautiful! I, I was depressed when Liverpool won, um, but when obviously the vermin scoring the winners there. But I tell you what, oh, it's so funny. You know, start with that.
Right, okay. Let's all laugh at your right Let's all laugh at your right da 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 Let's all laugh at United. Let's all laugh at United. Oh, I'm going to watch Saeed's um, fan uh, uh, when he does his interview after. I'm going to watch that. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. So there we go. There we go, Martin. I've had my outburst. It's like having a five-year-old on, isn't it? <laughs> uh, uh, Salah Ibrahim has got a response back for you, Alan. Is Alan a City fan or just likes to shut on our players? Um, well, mate, we played well against Villa. I told you that last night in space. We played well. It's the best football I've seen from City play this year because they played a false nine. And I hate to say it. Oh, there he goes. With how I'm not, not there and, and playing up front and playing, and us playing a false nine, it's more fluid. And it is. It is more fluid. But we've got to be honest. It is. So I'm not saying Harlan's not a good player because he is, but do we play better football without him? So would you sell him, Alan? No, I wouldn't say that, mate. There's 19 other clubs and about 50 clubs around Europe. I'm not that saying that. I've never, I've never said I want to sell him. So don't ever repeat that, right? You just but put Alvarez in ahead of him, and Alvarez couldn't hit a cow's ass with the banjo, Alan. Okay, we played better for last we, night. We Who's we played better? The first we goal? played better. Alvarez football. losing the ball. The other one is to give me mel- a meltdown, not the other, not the other way around. We play better football, mate. We do. We're a false nine. I'm sorry, but we do. Didn't play false nine. All right. Where have you got we played it's, false nine? Yeah. I just I just think um, Where have you got we played false nine from. Alan, I, I think the channels, that's the problem. I think no, we just got to think this is what Alan does. Alan listens to Roy Keane and other deluded people and follows their takes. Yeah, I think I actually I actually think you know the driver for last night. I, you know I think we'd have played well with Haaland in the team instead of Alvarez. I think to I me it was letting it was letting night. Phil. I was yeah, debate. I was it was letting debate. Phil loose in the middle. It was the way Rico came into midfield. Yeah, the and Phil and Rico having having Grealish black black playing well, Doku yeah. playing well on the right. I think you know I think. It would have, was set up for Harlem last night, and I think he must have been a bit grumpy. He wasn't playing because I don't Great think credit to Grealish. He dragged so many yeah. defenders in, and they were able to do that little overlap inside the um, eighteen yard box of Bernardo. That was it yeah. shows what we're missing when he hasn't been able to play. It was good. The performance was good. Yeah, hang, on, hang on, hang on, right. This is where I want to go to because a lot of City fans are doing this today, and I understand it. What we're doing is now we're doing A to Z again. And it's everyone's mean- opinion, it's fine. You know, before anyone said, I'm giving my opinion. Pep Guardiola is not going to leave Edison, John Stones, KDB, Erling Haaland on the bench for the rest of the season. If you're living no, on no. that, I'll have a thousand pound charity bet with anyone right now. Let me see who's got the testicles to take that one up on me. No, right no, I'm not, I'm not one who said that. It's only you saying it, Marty. Ellen, you sent Harland and KDB out back last night, and there's about 40 witnesses to it. Oh. Well, Harland's been... We were playing with 10 men for the last th- three games. Top goal yeah. scorer in the Premier League. One of the best goals to many. I don't care, Premier but he's been... been two and a half months injured when his grandma died. Ma- Martin, never make the mistake of taking anything Alan says, especially in the motion of a football match, seriously. And He's never make the mistake of... Out. And the rest of the Premier yeah. League couldn't keep up with him. So the rest of the other Premier League strikers must be absolutely like wank. Well, yeah. Is Sally garbage, Alan? No, he's not. Then why is Haaland ahead of him? Mate, mate, I'm not saying he is, but Haaland is off the ball. He's not very good. In certain oh, games, I agree goals. with you. But in other scoring, games, he's been very scoring good. Goals, scoring goals, he's the best in the world. Well, as far as I can see, what is that? What is that? It's it a goal score. That's all he is. Right. So, so right. Th- there we go. He's then. Got to do more. The way we play, he's got right, to do he's more. Twenty-three. He's, he's twenty-three. Let him develop. You're, he's Harlan, 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 you're expecting Harlan to do ca- what Harry Kane does at twenty-nine. Harry Kane's, by the way, Harry Kane's about yeah, and I, that was my point. Like he is when he first started, he was pretty much the Harlan. He's yeah. learned over time. 
to become more adept at going into the midfield. But you've got to give him time. He's 23 years old. You're putting a lot of pressure on him. He put a lot of pressure on himself this season, coming off an amazing season <laughs> so for his first season. Be laughing at that. <laughs> we would be in League Two. <laughs> <laughs> we had Alan in charge. Jesus, we beat. Where are you from? You're in. <laughs> uh, Alan. Alan, Alan would have sacked Pep in his first season. He, he Thank you, Neil. Sacking, sacking about 20 times in that first season, as he say. You know, I'm history sure would be very different. First season, if I remember yeah. rightly. We'd be on our 15th manager in the last decade if, if Alan was in charge. <laughs> <laughs> and as for Otamendi, Otamendi would have been bloody crucified. <laughs> Great part what, is time. It, what, is it with, what is it with Sydney and managers named Alan <laughs> Alvarez just forgot where the 18 yard box was. I stand in the south stand and think he only went to the box. Listen, 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 all I'm saying is Haaland needs to improve his off the ball work at what he plays for City. That's all I'm saying. Lately, lately, I agree with you. But I can yeah. name you about 10 he games where he's actually done a very well. Six foot four, built like a brick shit house. And he he's 23, Alan. I don't care. I think, big, yeah, big I big think, big. honestly, I think we're going to find that he's going to have a very big rest of the summer this, this, and that he's, yeah, he's so carrying fast. something. I, I think, I don't think he's fully fit. I think he's carrying something. I don't think. I've, 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 no way, I've, I've no way. And I think he'll have a lot. Pardon, well, we didn't it. tell Alan to do this. This is just <laughs> Alan being Alan tonight. We promised <laughs> we have not told Alan to come on and do this tonight. Rich, now and again we do it. We do set one and not set it up, but we do trigger each other. Alan's on his own here tonight, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's here. Alan has sent KDB out back. He's now killed Alan off. Foden was so awesome second half. Oh, by the way, up. right? Okay, okay. We're doing this then. Why was Foden shit Sunday then, Alan? Would you have dropped him? No. But you dropped Ireland. He was shit Sunday. He, was, well, he, was, he wasn't shit, mate. He wasn't even on the fucking oh, pitch. Phil, Phil, Phil Foden wasn't he on the pitch either, mate. It, mate. It was a fucking... We played Alan, for 10 minutes on Sunday. Words, right? Phil Foden, worst game in a city shirt. Fine. But Ireland was we played with 10 oh, minutes. Oh, we played fine, with 10 minutes. Right? Alan has his favourites. Yes. Alan, I don't mind you having an opinion, but just say I have my favourites, mate, and then we can move on. <laughs> just say I have my favourite. Uh, no. Nunez is one of his big favourites. <laughs> what did you make of uh, Bernardo last night, Alan? He was all right. I thought he did okay. I told you that. He said he created space for um, for, for Jack, which he did a lot. So don't the talk to me about fucking Bernardo, night. mate. What's going on with that one? Oh, I tell you what, have you not had seen some of the news today from the, the old soul like ITKs, have you? Go on, what's happened? Well, come out in force saying Bernardo's out the door in the summer. Well, you that's coming from your mouth, mate. How many Twitter accounts do you think I've got? <laughs> mate, if he's on the Twitter, it's come straight from the White Horse and the Rose and Crown. You know, that's where I, it's come Don't from. you ever believe anything I ever say then? Oh, the person right, I speak okay. to, all person. right, but I don't going nowhere. You've been saying this for six years, and he's still there. He's going to go um, sometime. But yeah, yeah, yeah hey, mate, when he's when he's I'm in his thirties, when, when he's in his thirties, when he's in his thirties, when he's in his thirties, he'll go. Yeah, yeah I'm hearing a deal. Hours. I'm hearing today a deal for Joe Neves itching closer. Agent with meeting cheeky today at the CFA. Right. Okay. That yeah. said. Joe Neves' agent could be meeting City about 15 different both. deals. It, no, no, he isn't it? Isn't both. it? Isn't it Jose? Isn't it Ho Edison? Isn't it Mendes? Edison. Yeah. So if it's, yeah, but if it's Mendes, he could, he could be Mendes. talking yeah, City. He, all yeah. Yeah. he could be talking about Bernardo, yeah. about Neto. Well, hang on, before we move on, I need to ask Nobby a question. How do you know Chantello. this is his last season with his Nobby's network? Is that you thinking it will be, which is fine, or are you saying you know that for fact? 
We could play well, it. Well. No one, no one on there doing transfers. No one big on there. Big things and there's no way Bernardo's going at the same time. It's two big, massive players out. Matt Fogg, thank you for your generous, generous super chat. Yeah. Thomas last night, but I agree with Martin. Harlan would have bagged three at least last night. I think he would have. Had I just think he's spamming them crosses yeah. in. I don't know about you, Docker and Grealish gave us the perfect balance. And what really annoyed me last night is when Harlan plays, we go we go into traffic and all down the middle because generally KDB's there. And then when Alvarez is playing, we put two wingers on and we're going to go, wee, let's go balls in the box. And you've not got your six foot three giant in there to put the head on. Someone help me or what happened because sometimes Pep does make me go, What are you doing, mate? Yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Either way, I think Harlan needs some, I think Harlan's carrying an injury and I think he needs some rest. So I think it's good that he is getting some rest because we want him firing in the big games. No, he was, Joanne. I'm just, I was proving the point to Alan about his double standards. And I actually I mean, also you... think mentally that Harlem will respond really well to being given a rest and being given, you know, especially if Harlem sees it a little bit as being dropped because he is a mentality monster. He is a an absolute fighter. And he's probably someone who never in his life has, has had, you know, anyone dropping him. So actually, I think it might put an extra bit of fire under his belly, which could be good so I think he got a hat trick last night but I'm also quite happy he got rested I think what's quite interesting mentally and physically is that you know this is the first time really Peppers has found a striker he can really work with I mean there were rumours that you know Pep really didn't want Haaland um, didn't really think he'd be the kind of striker that he'd, he'd want to play with because we know his track record with strikers, you know, has, has not always liked certain, you know, players and, you know, they've, they've had a lot of falling down, but I haven't watched it yet, but from kind of reports I've heard, the Netflix documentary shows that both of them have got a fantastic relationship and Pep absolutely loves Harlem and, and the feeling's mutual. So... He I seems like a good lad. He seems like a good down to earth, funny, good lad, Harland. Like not a prima donna, you know, keeps himself to himself, you know, football. I think he seems like we've got such guy. a good squad though, Rich, is because the players we have got, all of them are down to earth. All of them Yeah, it's not many no no dickheads policy. No I think. prima donnas. Yeah. Do you no, know what really what really yeah, stands well, we have that with Harlem in the fan base. <laughs> You know what really stands out for me with Harlem with his professionalism and his, you know, the right mentality is the one that really stands out for me was straight after we won in Istanbul and they were having, they were having interviews and, and, you know, they have a little bit of banter, a bit of back and forth with Michael Richards and Jamie Carragher. And then before, you know, by the time he's finished, finished having a laugh and having a giggle with him, he just turns straight to Terry Henry and he says, what do you think I can do to make myself a better striker? Like that just, that just screams elite mm -hmm. mentality to me. You know, it, it could be over, it could be over there. You know, trying to get on somebody's shoulders, being chaired off the ground, and all that sort of stuff. If you wanted to, and pouring champagne in the trophy and drinking out of it, if it would, you know, that's more, I don't know, somebody else might do that. But um, yeah, look, for me, just the fact that he's 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 got such respect for the game and, and those that have come before it, that all he wants to do is just talk to those who, you know, he's following in their footsteps and just wants to know how he can be as as good as what they were or even better. And that really, really stands yeah. out for me. And that's why I look. I look at him, and I just think, you know, there's there's reasons to, there's reasons to believe that not only is he going to be a great a great asset for the, for the for the game of football, but he could he could be one of the greatest. He could be one of the greatest we've ever seen in a blue shirt. Yeah, especially after and, that season as well, Pat. That he had. Do you know what I mean? Like the score, you know, the goal scoring. You know, fifty goals in a season. I mean, to go up to Armory and go, how could it be better than you when? He did better than on Rainey's first season. Mm. It's just, yeah, so wonderful to see. Yeah. But I, so, think, so, yeah. I agree with you. Why is everyone throwing Harlan and KDB under the bus? Because they're all listening to Roy Keane. Roy I don't Keane think, you know, words. yeah, I don't the think most, has people, to most people, people with are. Yeah. yeah, I don't I think most like people it. are throwing them under the bus. I think, 
Oh, nice no, people. Hey, hey, some of the things I've heard from actual... On, 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 yeah, but on Twitter, Twitter, you know. No, no, Rich, Twitter, no, no. Not your average C fan. nonsense. I've seen it on other YouTube channels. Please stop saying and Twitter. I bet, but YouTube, generally, I'm not talking about a wonderful channel like ours, but YouTube channels All generally... The channels, are there. The YouTube <laughs> channels generally <laughs> are there to cause conversation drama to be controversial <laughs> to get people watching to have an edgy opinion and so it, they're not truly representative of your average down to earth city fan who, who who watches the games they they they're edgy uh, you know that's why right, we have alan on you know well i'm just i'm just thinking i know i'm conscious of time and the amount we're going to get through Martin Everton, and good authority that KDB is a good one year role and get extension, which will be done in the summer, subject to improving fitness. It is not in a city plan to or Pep to sell it unless huge bid. Plus, also, City gave a massive hint today over somebody. Portuguese, 19 years old, midfielder. No, but what I'll say is. Why would City are not going to put a pick, going to put a tweet out? Um, news incoming in the summer, I'll wait for it. Summer, as they put, I'll get it all by the actually put. And then the next tweet is a picture of Pep on a couch with five trophies. Do you think that was the breaking news picture of Pep on the couch with five trophies? I mean, it was nice. Yeah, or do you think the picture of Pep on, a, on the couch with five trophies symbolizes looking very relaxed, is symbolizing something else? That we're getting fined. Could be. Could be 150. Yeah. What's the tax on 150? What's the tax on 150 charges? You've got to be a lot of money to, and a transfer. Back. So 115 times 25% times what? Uh, anyway. Multiplied by the, think, square, the square you know, root of what hypotenuse. I think. I think the you know for me the two really big things for Pep now, the two big calls he's going to have to make, is is he going to play Foden and De Bruyne together, in in the middle again, or is he going to rest one and play the other in in the games? Because I think we're we've seen the best of them when they're not playing together in the middle. Um, I.e., is he going to in some big games drop De Bruyne and let Foden run the show? Because on form, arguably that's what he should do. The other massive call he's going to have to make is he's going to have to leave uh, Fit Edison on the bench because many more games like he's had for Ortega, I think it's going to be very, very hard um, to to drop Ortega. I think he's 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 got steadily a little bit quicker with his passing as he's played a few games. Mm -hmm. yep. So... Not as good as Edison, but cl much closer to him. And I think we'd probably all say, in terms of the actual shot stopping, you know, you and and in terms of running out rashly, even though I still blame Ake for Liverpool, he's not, he hasn't got that in his game like Edison. So I think Pep is going to have a huge goal. I, and I have a sneaky feeling that we might see Ortega keeping his place and Edison not getting back in the team because what are you just talking yeah. about for palace or are you talking about for madrid no well? i'm talking if he i'm talking about for madrid if, if ortega has a good game against palace i don't see how you can bring edison back in i think edison's next game might be chelsea i mean there's been a lot of rumors today that i did see that um they've come to a bit of a stalemate haven't they with these uh contract yeah. and impasse well, I'll tell you what Jack Garner's put today because someone's just giving me little snippets of what suits. Now, what I was told was he wanted number one, a chance to play number one football. Jack Garner confirmed that today within his book. Stefan Ortega wants some evolution on his future. City stars faced, well, goes on about that. Stefan Ortega, Man City's number two, is yet to extend his contract, expires in the summer. Um, there was. There will be decisions to make on Ortega's future. Male sport, which is Jack Gard, has been told he has reached an impasse with the Premier League champions over a new contract. Discussed two or three. All three have been turned down, or two or three of them, what I was told. 
with discussions have been, have been going ongoing for well over six months. There is understood to be differences over financial terms, length of the proposed deal, while the German 31 wants the opportunity to be number one at the highest possible level. Which is a which yeah. is a, yeah. every every yeah. player, every yeah. player. Well, I just said yeah. that. So again, make your choice. Yeah. You yeah. I don't, I don't blame, like you said, Martin, I don't blame him. He deserves to play number one. At, at, at no, 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 no. I, I agree. I'm just saying fans yeah. need to realise you're not gonna get both. I know. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, honestly, yeah. I think you try and keep them both for a season and you give he's you already give, done that. Ortega, bit. That's what he's told him. Yeah, he's we give Ortega one. a contract that Gives him a release clause with a decent price if he no, doesn't I would not say he'll never leave. number of games. No, 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 but they could do something clever with Ortega. Like, we'd, we'd want to sell Ortega for, you know, a lot of money. And why don't we just offer him a deal? You stay, you get... A lot of money. 25 get... Yeah, but 31 still six, seven years for a keeper. And why did he go... Yeah, but Rick, no, Rick, don't work that way. Come on. He's at the peak yeah. of his powers right now. But would he give Gundogan I mean? the three years if we were doing that, Rich? Uh, gun, outfield players different. No, you, City you know. have a policy, mate. Walker broke yeah, the yeah, policy. But, well, I don't necessarily agree that for goalkeepers we do, as Scott Carson shows. Well, they had a meeting um, with the Roma keeper last week. Yeah, um, we've got to prepare for, hit, for a keeper going because, you know... Who's to say if Ortega plays the rest of this season that he then doesn't sign a contract and Edison throws, you know, says, you know, I want to leave. You know, it's quite, mm -hmm. you know, there's never been a murmur from Edison once that he wants to leave, but if he's not, but he's been guaranteed his place the whole way through his career. Yeah, so I'll I'll take, think, I'll take I'll take hang on, Ortega's contract finishes in July 2025, which is next year. Not this year. So he's got a year. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. He's got another year. Yeah. But so actually. Yeah. So you want him to leave on a free? No, I don't. Well, that's. He, right, so he would be quite serious. If money for him, he has to go this summer. <laughs> if yeah. you want money for him, yes, you do. He, it would suit him, him to go for a free. We're not going to let everybody out for free, you mm. know. How, yeah, no. I know. How, how much do we pay for him? Can anyone tell me? It was a, it was a free. Yeah, it was a free. He'd run down his contract at um, a mini Bielefeld. We got him for free. Yeah, right. Yeah. So we've got a bit of time. We've it's also time. it. It also depends what we can get for him. Like, yeah, if someone comes and offers eight million, I'd say I'd rather keep him for a year than yeah. get eight million. Someone yeah. comes and offers thirty million, you know, it's it's a totally different kettle of fish. So we we will have an idea as a club what other clubs will be prepared to pay for him and I, you know I think unfortunately just profile and things I'm not sure he's got quite the profile that he deserves and that we would get quite the money he's worth but you know we'll, we'll have I to think, decide that I I'd, 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 honestly small money I'd rather keep him same with Walker if he was going to go for 10 million to buy in I'd rather keep him than get the money and let him go on a free yeah yeah, the thing is, is that we we've been we were saying for for a number of years, we needed a decent keeper to come in and challenge Ellison. We've now got that. Yeah, we've got Ortega, who is you know really come in and shown what he's capable of. Um, and you can't blame the guy. That, you know, he's like you said, Alan. He's got a year left on his contract. Yeah. Um, he's at the, the height of his power right now to say. I'm doing so well. I, I deserve my place to stay in this team. Well, he does, he does deserve to stay in the team. He does deserve to stay in the side. Yeah, of course yeah, he does. Well, but, then, but then you've got to, then you've got to think about... Well, because what did, what did Edison do wrong before he was injured, Alan? I'm not saying, but you, you, it's about taking your chance. If you, if you, if it, Martin, if you went in net for City and did, work, did really well, it well for doesn't work like that, though, Alan. Doesn't I know it like does. I know, but you'd be a bit pissed off if you. you yeah, know, well, so, Alan, and, that's football. Yeah. The problem, the, I think the it's quite interesting got, as well, though. Problem, sorry, I was just going to quickly say the problem we've got is the longer that this keeps going on, because Ortega, we, we, we all agree he is good enough to be a number one choice keeper in a lot of teams, not just in the Premier League, but all across Europe. It's cover, man. 
Otherwise, what you're going to have, otherwise, what you're going to have is you're going to have another situation like Barcelona did a few years ago, where they had um, Ter Stegen and Claudio Bravo fighting for the number one spot. And the only way they were able to sort of work around that was Ter Stegen, I believe, was playing the champ- Champions League, and Bravo was playing all yeah. the domestic matches. Or, or basically, yeah. Ter Stegen was playing cup matches, and Bravo was playing league matches. And that might work initially, but sooner or later, one one keeper or the other is going to say, "Hang on a second, I'm better than this," and they're going to want to go. And luckily for Barcelona. Their blessing in disguise was we, we were desperate for a, we were desperate for a keeper when when Pep first came in, so that's why we got Bravo. So, while while it might look all rosy for for now, but sooner or later, the goalkeepers the the goalkeepers are going to want to play where they get the game time. And you know, if if Ortega was probably you know maybe eight or nine years younger, then he probably would be okay to stay in second choice because you take every opportunity you can get. Or maybe if he was another five or six years older than what he is now. He'd probably be happy doing what he is doing right now. We'd all probably laugh and say, "Yeah, he's now going to be the German Scott Carson or something." You know, cult following. You probably, you know, something along those lines. But thirty-one. This is prime goalkeeper age right now, and I don't want him to go. Of course, I think he's absolutely fantastic for a second keeper. But he's earned the right. He's deserve. He deserves to be able to go somewhere where he can consistently play as a number one keeper. If he goes somewhere in Europe, I'd happily take you know fifteen, maybe something around fifteen million for him. If he was going to go to the Premier League. You know, there's every reason why we could probably go for double that. You know, twenty or twenty-five, thirty million, because you look at you look at the quality of keeper that we've got in Ortega, he can easily start for at least three quarters of the Premier League sides, easily, in my opinion. I oh, think he could start for uh, nineteen of them. Yeah, but I think it's quite interesting because a lot of second keepers have come in this season for other clubs and done really quite well. So I think it shows that there's there's a lot of quality out there. And I think you know it, it, when they when we get when you get a, de- a decent second seat keeper, you know they're like gold dust, and we have got that now. Um, the problem is is that if we do lose him, it's who we, do we replace him with? Because you know we've never found a backup keeper to to challenge Edison until now, um, and I'd hate to lose him. Yeah. Well. Uh, sorry about that, Sod. Zinical says, thank you for your £10 generous super chat. Keeper market isn't great right now. How much do a team like Chelsea pay for Ortega? Uh, no keeper on the market better than him. Need a replacement first for thinking about selling him. Well, they have had a meeting, I got told anyway, reportedly, that they had the meeting with that Roma keeper. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at it now, Martin, because um, I was uh, Miller Svilla, Svilla, I think it is. Yeah, 23, I, 24. Yeah, because I was I was chatting to my mate Aaron who lives in Adelaide. He's a huge Rama fan. He's obviously Italian. And um, yeah, he's just basically said like he's been unreal for us this season, really stepped up, um, uh, become our number one keeper. But they Roma, uh, he has said that Roma are looking at, at extending his contract. Well, we'll say, but um, just to answer your question, Rich, Ortega was free. So he's pure profit into a free peep this summer. Yeah, no, I think he's, um, I think. I think Not that we need coffee for yeah. FFA. Right, let's move on because we're really good. We're going into different subjects here. Palace. Anyone want to change the team for Palace? Think there'll be changes? Pep said there will be. Pep said there yeah. will be changes yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I that I think honestly, Pep needs to decide his team for Madrid and work back from that. I, I'd be very controversial against Palace, and I would give Rodri a rest. I think with the Real Madrid games, the Chelsea semi-final, um, he's going to need a rest. He's going to either need to miss Palace or Chelsea. Uh, you know, I, I think otherwise we're risking blowing up far more. Um, so I'd be controversial. I'd rest. I'd rest Rodri. I'd bring Harlan back. Um, I might give. Foden the rest and let De Bruyne run it in midfield. But if he wants to use De Bruyne in Madrid, he may have to leave De Bruyne out again. Um, I'd be happy to keep the back four, although we might want Stones to get half a game. So, you know, maybe we'd, we'd start Stones. But, yeah, I'd say I'd be changing three or four just to get the... Um, just to get people moving. I think you surprised i think if 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 roger's dropped i think the only way you're going to kind of able to have roger having a bit of a rest is that you have kovacic alongside him 
and then if we're you know a couple up you know we're, we're cruising then you know he's taken off you know with 20 minutes to spare maybe but I, I think you'd be very I'd be very surprised if he's dropped that pitch yeah I think we, we just can't afford to drop him I think you know if we were to still be challenging for the league you know it, we, he's gonna have to be in place as much as we all can probably see the burnout and the risk i just don't think we can but if we if we if we don't then we're going to lose him at his best he, he has to have a couple of games rest he's not going to play 15 games and we've got to pick two or three games to rest him and we said this last season me, as well rich you know, yeah so and we fell over the line rest. We, yeah we fell over the line we we played you know if we look at it honestly we played some of our worst games at the end of the season in the fa cup final and the champions league final and we've got a harder run you know we've potentially got arsenal in the semi-finals you know if we get past madrid so i don't think we and madrid have 11 days rest before playing c we've got three games in the time that madrid are oh, playing one days. game is it is it nine? i think we've got three games in the time that they have no games nine days, nine days. so yeah so and we've got three games in those nine days so we we have to take the ball by the horde and i think we have to say right Come on, Jimmy, with I'm not asking anymore. Just get the game on for now. We're I'm not asking I, promises anymore. No. I, anyone who wants to start playing pretty football with eight games to go, and, you know, now just get the game on. See you later. And I, don't just, care. Yeah, like, and I just, agree, Martin, with you. you know? Just to mention, too, you know, what was amazing was, it, you know, and it seemed like yesterday, I think it was like mid to late February, we're all freaking out about rodri's yellow cards and it's just amazing how well not only the, the quality of football he's been playing but how well disciplined he's been as well too because no, he's still sitting on eight he's still sitting on eight cards and so long as he only gets one more between now and the end of the luton match next weekend it all resets and he's he's, he's back to zero again so whether he plays or not whether he rests rotates anything like that you have every confidence yeah. that he's still going to be able to put in a fantastic, <laughs> fantastic job for us. Anyone else? I, I, I kind of get what you're saying. Like rotation is important, but a lot of the time, too, games like this, games like games like this, um, it's it scoreline can determine a lot of the rotation too. And you do see it usually when we lead up to a big knockout game that if we do get the favourable sort of scoreline in the league match, usually when we get to the last thirty minutes of a game, it's um, you know it's just mass rotation. And you know, if you can get if you can get your your, your your crucial players off, you know, two thirds of the way through a match and everything like that, it's it, it can mean it can just help so much more with their rest and recovery and that before they play midweek. I see. I agree with Nick, but you got to remember, we've not been in that position, Nick, to do that. Last night is one of the very fortunate decisions at four one where we can get that done. Mm -hmm. When the game's one nil, two one nil yep. nil, Pep won't take yep. him off, Nick. That's the difference this season. Games are a lot closer. So I think that's why he's not willing to take him off. Yeah, Plus, I mean, with the amount of injuries we've got as well, he's not going to. We haven't really talked about Palace either yet. Um, Palace has always seemed to be one of those bogey teams for us, you know, especially away. It, it's it's so frustrating, guys, because they put in good yeah. performances when they got poor form leading into when they play us. Or well, then when they've got really good, or when they play seasons where they actually are playing good form, they come and have shockers against us. It's so hard to predict. Yeah, they, they really are. Um, it's just so difficult. But they've got quite a few injuries as well, haven't they, Pat? Mm. Yeah. Like, coming into this game. So, I, I just don't know what Palace is going to turn off. Whether they're just going to absolutely frustrate us like Arsenal did. You know, and we're just going to have to keep tapping and tapping away until... You know, we break the defence, or yeah, you know, it does. It does scream of low block and counter. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, right about the injuries. I'm just going through it now. They got Mark Mark Gehi's out, Chuck Decore's out, Elise's out. Although he's back in training, uh, Rob Holding's out, Ben Johnson's out. Yeah, they're just yeah, their injuries just atrocious. Yeah. 
that's just the name of you yeah and the form has been up and down as well hello any update on palace uh i just think that palace are well, i've been to palace's ground and it's a tight ground and it's a difficult place mm. to go and get results i think that i think that uh, they're a battling side they're a physical side because it's a big, a big team i just think oh she wouldn't want to start playing alan bingo because he comes out with the same words every time but it's all right it's okay <laughs> i just think I, I just think that palace um won't be easy but we're more than capable of getting the result that we need. Where, where are, are they? Since their new managers come in, I've not watched them for ages. Have they changed in the way the way they play? Because Roy Hodgson, very solid, uh, Vinci type team to play against. Um, have they, have they, has that manager changed the way they play in any way? Have, have, you, have you seen much of their, their games? Anyone? They've won one in five. Lost so one, good drawn one. one. Yeah. <laughs> they've played quite a, quite a lot of relegation teams in the last few weeks as well. Yeah. And got beat. And got, beat. got beat, got drawn. You know, got some good players, they've got some good players, though. To be fair, they've got some good players that will get sold at the end of the year. To, to, <laughs> to Definitely to bigger clubs. You know, as they do, is a good is a good player as well. They've got yeah. players that can hurt us. They have got players that can hurt us. Mm. There's every risk too. The will be. There's every risk too that they'll be leggy as well too. They just come off um, playing uh, Bournemouth uh, away same time we did. You yeah. know, and they don't play every three days. So you know, this they, we've seen it before at this stage of the season. Teams that are forced to play every three days that are not familiar with playing every three days, they do get leggy very very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be a frustrating, ugly game, Pat, in all honesty. Yeah. Yeah, they'll make it ugly until we're able to score. It's not yeah. it's, it's not, It's not. a good situation that we're playing games in schedules at the way we are at the moment. It really isn't, um, especially when Madrid are not playing for 11 days. Why are they not playing for 11 days? Because <laughs> La Liga tried to help their teams in Europe, whereas the Premier League... Don't. either don't or can't because of the amount of football i mean the trouble is you know i've seen some city fans saying that oh, it's really unfair the way we're playing but the truth is we've got 15 games between now and when the season ends and it's about 11 or 12 games between well 13 games between now and when the premier league season ends so every time we bring forward a game and we have a little a gap here we have a bigger gap elsewhere ultimately we're still playing the same games in the same time so I think some of the moaning would be moaning even if the fixtures were the other way because we'd still have a smaller gap somewhere else and there's not did, did a they, lot did the fixtures you can get, do. Did the fixtures get authorised by the Premier League or is it the TV that are doing this? It's TV. It's, it's both. It's, it's, it's the Premier League based on their contracts with the TV companies so they have to meet their contractual Ooh, obligations. Alan, stay around because wait until we get to FFP, mate. You're going to eat your own words. Well, that's is uh, they're only considering that's a difficult. No, I learned it's nearly here, mate. Mate, it's a, considering is a maybe. A maybe means like what you say oh, to your kids. We'll yeah. see. It doesn't mean nothing until it's finalised. It means nothing. Alan, anyway, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like a like a, a, like a, like a going, going, going back to Palace. Thank God. Um, we need. Thanks, is there, uh, Martin? Do you think uh, what's just watching Palace players? Do you think there might be? Should we have a little bit of a scouting on uh, a very as considering there has been talks and he's a good player well. he's a good player yeah he is a very good player it was you know, million. I, 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 million. I i well yeah, i yeah. think i'm not surprised by i think in the market yeah yeah, yeah. i yeah. think this summer you get him, we you need get to buy yeah i think this yeah, summer true. we need to buy players who we know can walk into the side and start on not a level with it. our current best players i agree this summer. I, I think Eze, you know, he's got potential, but I think Eze is more in Can the you stay on Palace Nunes. Yeah, yeah, Palace 2 0 will win. Sorry, if I'm in the chat, preparing, I'm we're preparing for Madrid. Yeah, we're preparing for Madrid because, you know, the one thing the club knows is no matter what we do in the league now, sadly, 
we can't control our destiny. If Liverpool keep winning, they win. We'll try and win every game, but they know we control our destiny in the Champions League. So I, I do think, honestly, if it comes to a slight um, preference with Pep between Madrid and Palace, he's going to pick the Madrid team first and Palace will be Correct. based on the Madrid team. Correct. I'm going for a 3 0 win. You see, I think we're going to miss the 88th minute chance that, that turns my I team just think into City your are, 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 took the shackles off. I think you'll be nil nil. Didn't get more. Go for it. Eight wins are needed. Go for it. I think yeah, it'll be zero nil. pressure. Zero pressure now. I think it'll be nil game is 3 0 up with an hour to play, and then we can just go and do five substitutions. No, eight wins just for play me. The game out. Or P, move on. Let's just, just take each game at the time and see where we land. I think it'll be nil nil. Then we're out of the title race. Okay. How's that? Uh, I think it'll be a, like I said, an ugly 2 nil. Yeah, can I say my 2 0 will be prettier than Aussies? I think it's in the chat. <laughs> so no, no, league's not over yet. First team ever to win the four P. Anyway, right on from the um, sublime of football to the ridiculous of the brand new proposed FFP news that has come out today. Um, <laughs> we go from stringent rules to having let's have no rules open season. Um, I will read to you all, some of you will have known about it, but I will read you all what exactly is uh, being looked upon. Considered. Um, Considered. The Premier League are eyeing abolishing points deductions and introducing NBA style luxury tax. Over fears, top stars will leave if rules restrict their pay after Everton and Nottingham Forest lose points. So, what they're basically saying is, um, get rid of old PSR completely. I'm basically saying, if you are rich and you earn so much amount of money, each club is going to be told what their profit and what they can spend is, and that's fine. If you, but what they're saying is, you can go over that if your owner is willing to pay a luxury tax. Uh, which will be filtered down the Premier League clubs. So the tax apparently will not go to the Premier League, it will go down the Premier League to the clubs. Now, apparently they do this sort of thing in NBA basketball, because um, they say the sustainability is not fit for purpose. They want radical reform, and it's been discussed amongst the clubs. Um, as many as 17 of the 20 clubs are thought to be leaning towards the process. Well, this is where I would yeah, think it's not that I, close. I, I, I can understand why they're leaning towards it because you know, one, they get money, and two, not legally obliged to pay out players' contracts if they get relegated. Absolutely fine, really Alan, but they'll, they'll yeah. never win the league. Uh, the money's collected, which could run into tens of millions, would then be redistributed to these Premier League who complied with the rules. It has been discussed that some of the fans could even go into an emergency fund to assist EFL. Now, I did say last week the white paper has now been taken up by EFL clubs and that, that money got distributed last week. So, for example, they believe that should clubs wish to have a go, and here's the crucial part, have the money to do so, they should not face a punishment that could plunge them into the championship for a luxury tax. So, for example, if they want to go 400 million over what their budget is, Fine, you're going to pay tax on that 400 million. I can understand why they've done it. And the here's, league here's will be called Manchester City versus Newcastle for 25 30 years. Good. I, I don't necessarily. He didn't want he, he said it was monopolized yeah. last week. Look right. at him, he's all right now. Firstly, a couple of things, Matt. A couple of things, Matt, Martin. A couple of things on this. It won't become Manchester City versus Newcastle. It might become Newcastle because City Piss could have spent more. City could have spent more money the last five years 
and have chosen not to because City actually want to be profitable. The so shape doesn't want to throw billions. One of these proposals, mate. City, yeah. And secondly, it all depends how you set the targets. For me, I'm I'm all for that, but the luxury tax should kick in at the same level for everyone. So no, if won't City. Do. No, question, but that, and that's question wrong. for you. That, all that that's just embedding the unfairness. The, that's the, what we're saying. Luxury, it's just making it bigger. No, no. What you should do is say that the luxury tax is payable on you know, take cities, take cities um, you know, allowable amount, and let's say that's 440 million. The luxury tax should be set above 440 million, and therefore Correct. only payable if people go above. The highest so if everton go to 300 they don't get taxed because there's absolutely no point in taxing clubs who might financially struggle you know that's going to be every bit as harmful as as things so i'm Agreed. all for it but the tax should be set like the M the mbas isn't set differently for every club as i understand it it's set on you get 300 million a season or whatever and if you go above that you pay a luxury tax and honestly if that was done and it was set at a fair amount, it might be set at you know the 80th percentile or it might be set at the top club or whatever it is, set it and then let it go. And then honestly, I'd be being you know, I'd then distribute it and bottoms up with the bottom team getting more than the team below I'm not, I'm not, so I'm that not. it becomes this, an equalizer. I presume he's a Leeds fan saying Leeds United best team in England. You're about to fail FFP when you come up. No, we don't want that because they need to sign Calvin. So we need Leeds to have at least. City should make a Calvin Phillips clause no, go on, in the carry contract. On. Tell me how this is not. Um, I mean, Craig Patterson's point isn't like that. The 105 will be staying. We have set amount for each £25 million spent over the 105. It was the same for every club, but this comes back to what I said. It's why it becomes Newcastle versus City Rich, because they're the ones that can pay the tax. The rest won't. You know, United can pay the tax. You know, if they want to, Tottenham can, Liverpool can, Arsenal not can, to City, and Rich, not to yeah. City's level. I don't know. Honestly, Martin, City Martin, are not going to go out and Colin, spend you know two billion. City no, are not going to go out and spend two it's billion. It's they it's have it's said, it's just listen. City's owners from day one, their objective has been changed, creating changed, a self-funding, changed, sustainable. Rich changed. I won't say it on air. It hasn't it's changed. changed. It's Seven changed, years. I know it has. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I'll Mr. tell you what's going Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe you're talking to more junior burgers and not straight to Caldoun like me. But um, City's yeah. Abu Dhabi's. Fund and the same with these is 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 a massive objective. We've we've had seven years of not spending close to what we could have spent, with one window as an exception, because on, Rich. we want on, to be Rich. sustainable. And honestly, I don't think I, I think you know Saudi Arabia might pump in half a billion into Newcastle quickly if they could, but they're not looking to spend. 50 billion spending a billion every year for the next 50 years, you know. Because yeah, you've got a chat with them, and you're rich, you know. Well, uh, yeah, obviously, I'm not like you talking to Mansoor every day, so I'm not gonna don't claim worry, Rich, to, you won't get jack yeah. shit any more than you that I get. But, anymore. Don't worry, mate. But, oh, but, oh, by the way, oh, yeah, the person we get the info from might be in the chat. Oh, yeah, when you've oh, snagged them off, but, but and then Martin, chat, mate, Martin, <laughs> Martin. <laughs> If there is a, honestly, honestly, and completely, there are information sources, and yeah, but the, only real, the only I'm real, the only real source of information, it. the only I'm source of information I would get. trust well, is the only yes. source of direct yeah, information watching. I would trust is Mansoor and Cal Caldoun. Every other bit of yeah, information that anyone has it's is filtering one, down yeah. through people. Yeah, well, and they will be well, right well, sometimes, well, and they'll well, be wrong sometimes. Oh, well, look, Alan! Now going to back chat very, very quick. Yeah. Unless, <laughs> no, no, unless, Enjoy. unless Mansoor, unless Shake Mansoor and Caldoun are watching, then any other bit of information, even if it was Soriano online or Pep himself, 
any other bit of information is not 100% because only Mansoor and you know, his relationship with Caldoun is ultimately set in the strategy for City. So well, all, let's not all, pretend all, we Richard, know what Mansoor's Richard, thinking. It's it's Richard, not. Richard, and I don't think any of our Richard, in the nose claim Richard, to be talking to Mansoor. Richard, we've got, to look at, we've got to look at who's actually invented this so-so possible proposal, right? The, it's come from, yeah, again, it's come from New York, New York and America again. It's not run yeah. by, by the Premier League. And to me, the sooner yeah. they put a vote of no confidence into the board of the Premier League, yeah. the better. I'm and honestly, this, if Newcastle are going to spend if you, Newcastle go and spend a billion and they're taxed half a billion, and that gives 25, 30, 40 million to Sheffield United, Luton, and things like that, then actually I don't think that's going to do the league a massive amount of harm. It might win Newcastle a title or two, but Ultimately, if that pumps huge money into the bottom clubs, that is not necessarily a bad thing. Only if they want to have a go. And it would be funny. So, if... No, no, know, no. If Newcastle the... the... want to have a go, Mate, the then they pay the tax. How the... is the structure of overspending yeah. the luxury well, tax? They're going to have that go, Rich. Yeah. Sorry? So, Martin, how, how, how is the... the money will get filled down, Rich? Because according to you, only Newcastle are going to have a go. Yeah, and if, if they overspend well, half... Well, one on team is going to get fined, say, 20%, 30% on... Say they went through in a million over. 10%, 30 million, 20%, 60 million. Shared between 18 other clubs. 19 other clubs. Oh, yeah, they're going to love a cheeky 3 million extra there, right? But, but to, to go 300 million over in PSR, that's 300 million in wages and amortisation. That probably means spending 2 billion. And I okay, don't think that Newcastle okay, are going to go and spend that. So what's the point in it then? Because we're talking peanuts getting filtered down then. The point is that the game is going to lose half its money and be destroyed if we have a game where points are taken off teams mid-season and there is yeah. no integrity in the league table. The game football is based on integrity in the league table. Otherwise, you may as well just go to playoffs and finals and stuff like that because there is no point in having a league table if you don't know three weeks out from the season whether the relegation fixtures you've got count for something or count for nothing, whether the title counts for something or nothing because it could be changed off the pitch. So they have got to get rid of points changes during the season. One way is to do it at the start of the season. But even then, how silly would it look if at the start of the season you've got team on minus 10, team on minus 8, team on minus 4, team on minus 2. It it just takes integrity out of the game. So they've got to fix it. So either you do things only in a small window out of the season or you have to make the penalty non-points. Now, well, they've come up with, um, just throw it in, the money's collected, Currently, such tax features in American baseball and basketball, American, other two main sports, NFL and national hockey, have had a hard salary cap. The UEFA's new rule, which limits spending on player and coaches' wages, transfers and agents fees to 70% of the club's revenue, is viewed favourably by some. A system of anchoring has also been discussed in the form of salary capping, which I think that will just destroy the league because you'll end up like the um, the American leagues. You'll kill it, and everyone will just leave. Um, so if Sheffield United, for example, finished bottom with an annual wage bill of £50 million, each club would have to set a multiple of that figure spent for the following season. Again, if a club breaks that cap, they pay a fine. There are other financial points up for debate at the end of the season meeting, such as they want to change the financial rule that's will only spend on players buying their salaries, Coaching staff is taken into account over the three-year rolling period. Uh, money spent on new stadium, infrastructure, youth development and community projects is exempt from the £105 million. Um, in February, an amendment to the rules was proposed by the narrowest of margins with seven votes needed to be blocked. <laughs> proposal, where there was 12 in favour, two absentees of the multi-club network this was on. Um, some feel that the change in the knock-on impact is on the ownership and other clubs overseas, a harmful one, thought to be Manchester City considering legal action. Spot on. 
and, and, and the, 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 they've got to try and stop the multi club ownership, i.e., City, if you're buying clubs. Well, I'm sorry, they'll go, they'll go into um, legal action against that one and they'll lose on um, uh, uh, the they'll, they'll Premier League will lose big fucking time. Restriction of trade, you can't stop that. Well, it might be too late anyway, mate, because City aren't the only ones that have interest yeah, no, in other clubs. Yeah. You know, Tony, yeah, Tony Bloom has a majority ownership. You know, it's, it's, union, union Saint Gall, Gall, what have they called in Belgium? Well, well, yeah, it's, yeah, I, agree, I agree with you. But United well, do. Villa have, a, Villa have a majority ownership in, um, well, Villa's owners have a majority ownership in, is it Victoria Guimaraes? The United, United do. Yeah. United do. Yeah. Ratcliffe does. Yeah, Ratcliffe does. Well, well not sorry. United, Ratcliffe technically. Any yeah. other sort of religion. Yeah, well, yeah. this is coming from the Americans, mate. All of it's been driven by them. Why are Americans running that Premier League? It's not in America. The dodgy Americans, again, about everything. Same, about the same reason the Americans, the same reason Dodgers. the Americans they run. Drive yeah. Dodgers, uh, man, die. Do yeah. apologise to any American fans within the chat. Yeah. And to be fair, Alan, America does run most things, you know, so in the world. So well, we try to, and they're also they also rig things as well. No, 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 Alan, Alan, can we get a bit more specific on what you're saying? For God's sake, Alan, Martin you're just slagging a whole nation off now. Martin and I are actually looking forward to going to Orlando. We don't want to get berated when we yeah, arrive. Unlike you, mate, we're going to America. <laughs> just because you're banned from every country in the world now. Yeah, I can, I can, yeah, family as well. I can confirm yeah. that too. I've been working in aviation, I can confirm. Yeah, yeah. But, but I, I think hey, I think, think we can yeah. separate. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. Hey, I'm glad you're from Sydney. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Genuinely, I do apologise. If there's any American people on, and they took offence to that, I do genuinely apologise. Yeah. Unless, the unless they're, they're FSG. Them. That's not unless happening. FSG. <laughs> unless they're yeah. FSG, yeah, the part of FSG. Yeah, FSG. No, no. I yeah. think that I think there is a, a big difference between American sports but, ownership and yeah. and that means Ozimov, not Ozimov, sorry, um, Cronky, um, you know, FSG and yeah. Glazers yeah. and their agenda for football, which yeah. I think is a, an American sports agenda, not yeah, an American agenda, um, and I think there is a clear strategy they have except for the fact they're trying to perfect it in America because America actually has some of the most egalitarian sports leagues around where different teams win, where caps are quite equal. And actually, in that sense, there are some quite admirable elements of American sport, but it has some real problems in it. In the no promotion relegation, I think, is, is terrible. I think that takes away the whole ethos of the game. And I think what they're trying to do in... England is not what happens in America. They are trying to create a rigged version of America where instead of 24 equal clubs, you have three really rich clubs and 21 poor ones. But then you embed all the caps and everything around that fix so that they're just permanently rich. I mean, it's, you know, it's not for sport. They're doing it purely to get rich and to remain rich and to get guaranteed cash flows. And yep. yes, that's logical because they're businessmen, but it's not good for the sport. <clears throat> AK, thank you for your generous £2 super chat. We've got Martin in the panel. Chelsea beat United 4-3. They did. And that snake Cole Palmer came out of his uh, slithering little... The Super ball. League is coming. The Super League is coming. And the Premier League are driving it towards uh, it. Still won't matter to you, Alan. You still won't be at the any games. The Premier um, League. The Premier League. He just signed an American 14-year-old. Uh, 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 Alan's <laughs> season <laughs> ticket. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> he has <laughs> another <laughs> one. Because when the club fell out, he's going to get revoked. Super League is coming on the Premier League. I'm driving it towards it. I'm telling Don't worry, you. mate. Your tickets in someone else's name will get revoked very, very soon. With what's All right. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Because that's why the checking ID everywhere. All oh, right. Well, there we go. Martin, I'm worried when we go to Orlando, we're going to be met with um, pitchforks and burning. Well, is there there? <laughs> in 1894, people have had three of their accreditations taken back, not coming back at the moment. And stewards are asking for ID and all tickets with names. So, Alan, you may laugh about that, but it really is no longer a joke. Well, You're seriously going to have to start ID and all. 
The Super League is coming very quickly. Super League is coming very quickly. Well, I hope not. It would be... Mate, yeah, the Premier League... The, 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 you, you, we've agreed on this. The Premier League are committing suicide and making that the money... Premier League are, towards it. The Premier League are at the moment. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, that's, uh, mate, I don't understand why... Interesting. I don't understand why the clubs... Have not done a vote of confidence, vote of confidence vote, no confidence vote to the board. Thank you, BB. Because, because, Martin, because, Alan, Alan, because Alan, Alan, as we said before, unless you've got a plan of what happens after the no confidence vote, i.e., you've got a very strong candidate to do the job, you yeah. know what you're going to do, there is no point. A vote of no confidence without a plan is suicide, it's just compounding the problem. So, you know, the interesting thing is. And, and what we don't know is, did Scudamore go because he knew this was all coming and yeah. it was all inevitable? Probably. Probably. And then Masters took on a, you know, a hospital pass? Yeah. Or is this partly of Masters making and he has changed the way this. they run the I've Premier League? I've explained this a thousand times and Rich and Alan don't want to listen to this, so I can't help him. The well, Premier League can make the rules, but but uh, uh, Martin, in these situations, the job of the CEO of the Premier yeah. League is to talk to all the clubs and work with the clubs who to make the right Rich? decisions and get the who votes, who votes for what? Rich? Martin, I think you, you're fundamentally misunderstanding how you know no, no, member organisations no, work. You have a good if you have a good leader, oh, yeah, you don't go it's into votes not knowing. No, no, you go into you don't go into votes not knowing what the outcome is going to be, and you get agreement it's, and it's you it's between the clubs first. You're saying it's already rigged before we get in the votes. Yeah, it's about mate. All I'll say is well, no, I'm, I'm saying. Let's see if you throw yourself on that legal grenade right now. Yeah, let's see if you throw yourself on that legal grenade. Because you've just mate. tied yourself up in a massive knot there, Rich. No, I haven't. I've it's said it's I've it's said it's that if you're the CEO of the Premier League, you you actually you just you're said they know the vote, they know the result before the voting. That's rigged. No, I didn't. It's like, no, it's like, I like Alan might have said that. I didn't. What did Rich say? Hey, I said you should. You should. You should. You can't should. do that, Rich. It's rigged then. No, rigged, that's isn't that is that isn't that isn't true. It's not rigging. If I if you sit if you but if I know the result when I'm voting, yeah, you should. Absolutely, you should. It's not about what, what five have... charges. It's not about what, what five charges. That's going to be rigged as well. It's about as, it's about as independent as a as, as you a, should... a Trump case in New York. Yeah, you should know the result because you should have addressed the controversial issues before the vote. You should have negotiated with the clubs to come to an outcome that can be fairly unanimous before the vote, and you should have got things organised and be close enough to the club owners and the club owners talking together to make decisions. If you go, in, if you go into a vote, if you go into a vote at a board meeting or. Uh, and I know the outcome of that vote. Board, if I and know you have no, going, right? if you do not know the way that vote's going to go, you are not doing your job properly. Oh, we're well, not what general election in the, the UK. Lads. Forget it. That's a, Forget it. We know exactly that, which way that, that is a total, It's a totally different situation. A board is twenty people, twenty individuals who talk, you just who said work it together in interest. A general election is sixty. Oh, anyway, Craig Farnley said, totally disagrees with you, Rich. Each club holds one share in the league, hence they need 14 from the 20 yeah. clubs. The clubs made the PSR yeah. rules in the first place to stop City years ago. Now they realise stopping them and not City. So City, why did it change? Yeah. The CEO of the Premier correct. League is basically employed by the 20 Premier League clubs. Yeah. And Scudamore. He's his, his boss. He's our bitch. Masters, yes. Masters wasn't even the choice when they were looking for someone to replace yeah. Masters. Uh, Scudamore. Scudamore talked to every club and made sure he knew where there were objections and he went and talked to those with other clubs to make sure things were running smoothly. And that is your job as the CEO of an organisation like that. Yes, they're the shareholders, but you've got 20 equal shareholders and you've got to make them work together. Now, the equivalent you're saying in politics is not a general election, is that if... The Prime Rachel Minister goes into if the Prime Minister goes into a yeah if the Prime Minister goes into a vote 
not knowing the way his own party is going to vote, he yeah. should not be yeah. party leader. He Correct. should be fired and someone else should be brought in. Because if you Edge. do not know Edge. the way your members are thinking, you are not doing your job properly. Rich, every other club in the Premier League hates us. Do you think they're all wanting to, do you think they're telling us anything? But one vote, if, if if honestly, if it comes to nineteen and one, you, there is he no never doubt does on that the vote because there's certain clubs who do stick together and others who do. But it, everyone thought this multi-club and third-party ownership of players was going to go one way in a vote. So and flip the didn't. question, Martin. Flip the question, Martin. Are you saying the CEO of the Premier League should have no idea which way votes are going and shouldn't be talking to the no, clubs? They have ideas. They have an the idea. Your words were not idea. You said he knows the result 100%. He going should in. know the result. He should know the result. He and works I for us. Not we work for them. I suspect Scudamore knew the result of every single vote he went into. And I suspect... Oh, and that needs investigating then, Rich, because that's corrupt then. No, it's not corrupt. There is absolutely right, zero oh, corrupt oh, about that. Do you know why, Rich? Because we work... He works for us. We um, don't work yes. for him. Yes, and that job that's is to listen to yeah, us. Right. No, you know, uh, uh, no Martin, he doesn't factually see the vote beforehand. Oh His job right, is to talk on. to us, listen to <laughs> us, and do what the clubs want. And if he's Spot doing that Richard. properly, Spot and he on. knows the views Spot of the 20 clubs, he knows the way a vote's going. And that is just normal. And that should be the case with any board, any political party, I don't know any if situation. Tonight, mate. If, if he doesn't know, he's not doing his job and someone else should it's be going in. He can't talk to the clubs. Mitch, I, it's fine. You believe what you want, mate. I disagree. Right, it's a fact of every board in the world. Oh, every organisation in Mr. business no in the world. Mr. No well, it's not. It's not. No, it's, it's a basic fact. No, it's not. It's, this is so basic. It's no, beyond. It's Martin, Rich is right. It, it, it is. It's, you know, if you okay. are a party political leader, a board chairman, and you do not have a clue what your directors and your members and your shareholders are thinking, you are not doing your job properly. That is a right. fact. You go, right. All right, then. We'll, we'll see them, won't we? Yeah, you'll sit every day because they didn't say the problem is Rich, the problem the problem is Martin is the Premier League is corrupt and it's been run so badly it's ridiculous and all this carry on is proving it. Yeah. That's why I don't want the board to have their jobs by the end of this year. And and and, 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 all and Alan, Alan, I would pull back on that comment as well because I don't think there is any evidence of actual legal. Too big no, you know what I've ever met. To make, uh, to make, uh, Martin, on the country, you are disagreeing well, with every... every you know, listen, yeah. I think that they're yeah. not fit for purpose. Yeah. The board you know, are not fit for purpose, mate. They're not. They're right. no, the, well, proved no, it. the board is the clubs, and maybe they're not fit for purpose, that sort of thing. But I wouldn't make a call of corruption either, because corruption is an actual crime. And I haven't seen any evidence, neither has anyone. We've seen evidence of people acting in self-interest, which in itself isn't a crime. Has there been? Maybe there has, but I don't think that can be a call made either. I think what you're seeing is dysfunctionality and greed. Yep, good point. Do I read Craig Parton's time's coming out? Yeah, well, if they want to make a specific allegation, That's then they can do so. been arguing with for 45 no. minutes with me. What? You and Alan going, if, you're wrong, you're wrong. If, that was if that point. You someone is al alleging corruption, they should make it that allegation to the police and it should be dealt with as a legal matter. I don't see That's corruption. What? I see Rich, bad right. behaviour, self This is where we fall out. Because this is exactly the comment and everyone in the chat I've been saying for 40 minutes. Maybe I'm not explaining it in the correct way. But that's in the whole point. The board members are the clubs. They all know the vote yep. and making all the other. Then it's corrupt, Rich. Why? Why is Liverpool telling This is what I said club? 40 minutes ago. No, why is that corrupt? Why is that corrupt? Why is Liverpool 
knowing that another club is going to vote against something because they don't think it's right and they've had a conversation about it. influence and they turn it into whichever way you want which is exactly what alan has said everyone's doing but now for some way red raging is now turned around and said it's not corrupt can you can Wait, you tell me mate, why that why is it, that correct? Richard, Rich, Richard is right. They, they, they will know which, which way clubs are voting. Alan, right, I'm going to say this very calmly. You are you are agreeing with Rich on something you have been disagreeing on for three mate, months. No, no, no wait, I, Alan, I, please I, listen. Rich. Because no, no, it's Martin, rich and you've no, got Rich knows. Martin, so right I disagree. That end, I disagree. You're agreeing with him now. I disagree. I, I agree yes, with Richard. Premier I agree with. Oh yeah, I agree. I, I agree. Move on, move on, because I'm you just you just rude. The Premier League board no, exactly rude, rude, rude. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll rude, move rude, on. Rude, can I just you can I just ask one thing? And Martin, Martin, okay. you can you can come back to this next week. But can no, you no, tell I'm me on. where? No, no. Can you tell me where in the Premier League rules? Alan agrees with you. Says clubs cannot talk. It's bullshit. I'm just asking a, que a, a simple me. question. Alan's agreeing you, with you to wind me up. What's can the you point show in me? That? No, no. Martin, I'm asking you a question. I'm not. Alan's I'm about to Alan. the fucking dog. I'm, I'm ignoring Alan on this. My question is: no, Where are the Premier League, League rules? Does it say Premier League clubs are not allowed to talk to each other? Where does it say the CEO, the Premier League, is not allowed to talk to the Premier League clubs and and see what they're thinking? Where does it say the Premier League clubs are not? None of that is corruption. That's just normal. No, normal right. business. Let me explain. Right. The same boring way board members will talk to each other. And it's boring the audience, boring me, and I don't want to okay. do it anymore because not everyone's a know it all in finance. What I'm saying is, Rich, the board members are the Premier League clubs. Yes. Alan has been bitching and moaning for six months that Liverpool, United, Tottenham, Arsenal all ganged up to vote in their favour. Yeah. And then Alan calls it corrupt. You've turned down tonight and gone, it's not corrupt. And Alan goes, Rich is quite right. No. I, Do you I, not I, see I, my point here, Rich? I, I, Martin, I, 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 I see that point. Martin, Martin, let me finish. I've said, I agree with Richard, on the, the Masters will know on, on, on what... On what then, it's then it's corrupt. Then it's corrupt, Alan. That he will know. He will no. know. And it's no. corrupt. He will, he will know. No. He's not it's doing corrupt. his job. Every board no. I know will know. Every businessman, every board Nobody member in never Britain. Been, no city fan every, ever moan about yeah. Liverpool United and all that ganging up on us then. Don't ever do it. They still do. They still do. Nobody ever do it. Masters no, no, knows, Martin, that. Masters knows Martin. that they do gang up. Martin, you can, you can disagree with someone ganging up on you and it's not corruption. We can disagree with their motives. We can disagree with what they're doing. We can think it's unfair. There are things they could be doing. If, if they are, you know, using, you know, illegal tools to influence other clubs or, or they're party to information that other clubs aren't, then there are things that could be dodgy. But simply agreeing with each other or talking with each other isn't. And that's that's the point. And, and people got to be very careful making allegations of criminal offences when they're not. But someone can still be deeply, deeply wrong and deeply unethical and not corrupt. I'm, I, I listen, I disagree, Rich, because I'm not having that with conviction moan about everyone ganging up and then we call it all corrupt and then we turn around and go, it's not corrupt. What you're doing is you're pissing in whichever direction suits your agenda at the time. No, I, th I think... And say yeah, hands I, have to stop all this ganging up on us then. No, we can still say it. It doesn't have to be corrupt to say it's wrong. Anyway, move on. I am never doing FFP with Rich again. I know, but you, never doing Martin, it. the frustrating thing is you take an emotional position and then well, you not argue something. This is a fan channel. Evident for fan. reason, you come in here and talk yeah. anything like a fan. No, because... A fan channel, Rich, and you talk everything but yeah, like a fan. But you can't... You can't it's like going think, to a football match and going, hey, excuse me, I'm a steward. But Martin, you're you're like saying that because you're a fan, you can say the sun doesn't rise in the morning, there's 29 hours no, 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 in the day, Rich, Rich, and things like that, and it's just Rich, not right. It's Rich. it's not promoting reality in right, people. Okay. You still have to base it on the facts. 
You still you have don't, to buy you, you know about your sort of finance, you don't know about FFP, mate. It, Martin, we're talking about the very simple fact of whether CEOs should manage their shareholders and understand their shareholders' views. It's That's not different. even the detail of FFP. The that, actual main clubs of the league at Rich. But, Martin, who do you think are the board members on most boards of most companies? Mm -hmm. They're nominated by shareholders. So boards of nearly every company are nominated by the main shareholders in that company and represent the shareholders. And then the CEO and the chairman, their job is to enact on the views of the shareholders, but know what the shareholders are thinking and to keep the shareholders aligned. Because if you don't have an aligned board, Let's you have chaos. On. Please, can we just move on? Yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll oh, go and leave. Not like you know, I don't know what's better, Judge Mo. Get the Hussam, damn. Rich, I'm getting you on Hussam's channel. You should. I think you should. Yeah, really. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <sighs> oh. <laughs> He's hit and run. He's done his hit and run. <laughs> You know what bugs me is when people twist their opinions around. That's where they get annoyed. And they have people doing it for jokes and agendas and everything else. And I just can't be asked with it. You've been going on about it for the last hour. I've been trying to move on for 25 minutes. You kept on talking. Scotty Mold, that's fine. The kid... Right, Scotty Mold, this is the thing you don't understand, mate. I ain't asking people to disagree with me. I don't agree because I know I got told something today that's very different than that. But I can't say it on here, Scotty Moll. I told Ozzy and Rich before we came live about it. I can't go into it, Scotty Moll, on here. Are we moving I'm on? Asking, I'm, I'm asking checking. nobody. I'm asking nobody to sell me any information anymore. I'm, I'm being. I am gonna. I'm coming out of this it itk game. I'm coming out of it. It's not worth it. It's so not worth it. I'm coming out of the itk shit. Anyway, carry on. Talk about transfers. <laughs> I thought, we'd already, I thought we'd already heard, for God's sake. Have a look, um, yeah. oh, I'm just, well, I need, well, and first of all, I needed to talk about, since we, we bring it up in the conversation about, obviously, um, you know, Joao Neves, you know, and it looks like what, what, what the reports are that apparently Cheeky's been talking to Benfica and trying to do some deal or something or... Cause it's funny because when you go online, all the all the news outlets uh, for the last twenty four hours has been nothing but New United have been talking to Benfica, which to me sounds like more like deflection sort of news. Oh, United, yeah. No, I, don't. I, I think know. most I don't. clubs online. You have a look. Have a look online. A lot of the new, a lot of the news has been out that there. Is, and United have been scouting it. There was a meeting today. Because I mean, I said it earlier, but I got told off Rich early. I was talking bullshit, so. I don't know where to go because go. Rich just says I talk bullshit now. So, and after, after people do, so I don't All know right, where to move go. on. Um, Joe Neves was our well, agent, was there talking about Edison contract renewal and advancing Joe Neves talks. Rich had to go to work, he put it in the private chat. Um, so yeah, um. The Frimpong talk has gone bigger as well. Apparently, uh, you saw the reports of Cal Walker potentially leaving to Saudi Arabia, which is an option. Um, which is why I got told the recall Lewis stuff had stopped. What was the other name for? Uh, Bruno Gamerez has had. A meeting with three, or not Bruno Gomez, Bruno Gomez's his agent, has had a meeting with three clubs. One was say, one was PSG, and I don't know who the other one was. Uh, what was the other? 
What was the other thing I got told? KDB will get a new contract. Uh, he's open to it. What's the other one? Edison, new contract. Mm -hmm. Pep's. Someone told me today Pep signed it or agreed it, which is what City are hinting at today. I think it was signed a while back, Martin. I think they've just waiting again like they did last. It was the way time. I got worded today. It's they said agreed, but they didn't say signed. So I don't know if agreed means signed. You know what I mean? It's a weird one. But yeah, I think City are teasing that up now. Um I don't know how long I just got told it is it is gonna come in. Um, because that's why City had done that. What did City put out? What did they do with it? They put something really see. I think in fact, have they changed it? Oh, have they changed it? Let me look here. Ah, they've changed it. Ah, that's a bit cheeky of them. See, they've only got now Manchester City, the five trophies and a pitch and a pet Guardiola. But they did have underneath it, and tell me in the comments what it had. I can't remember. What did it say in the comments underneath that tweet before it out? Who's? Can anyone tell me what it said? Anyone know? Anyone remember? I didn't see it at the time. Hang on. I'm gonna I'm determined to bloody find it. I'm too worried. Tell you what it was called. Right, I'll tell you what it was. It was, it was, it was, it was. Because it was it was a bit naughty with it. City were very clever with it. A lot of people are saying it was something special is coming. Yeah, it was like something special is on its way and they were being really clever with it. And then all of a sudden, is it still there? I can't see it on mine. Why is it gone off mine? That is well weird how Twitter's done this. That's if weird. Has, if anyone has a link, put it in the chat for mine. Yeah, yeah, no, do you know what's something bugs you? Yeah, oh, here it is. Richard Allen. Say, we have something special. You know on that, the way. Pat. We have something yeah. special on the way. They gave the eyes and then they put out a um a picture of Pep sat on the sofa with the five trophies. Why would they put out a tweet? Something special's coming if it's just a picture of Pep. I think that's got other connotations behind. Yeah. Yeah. I've read it now, Canary and Cheers, mate. Found it. Yeah, just great um, one thing to make. Yeah. Three more years. You think three? Mm. Yeah. Or are you including the one one and a half he's got now? I've got he does, a he does like a two year extension. He does like a two year extension. But I've just got a feeling it's going to be another three. So look, because Craig's put, yeah, United are scared of me. Craig and Rich are going at it in the in the bloody chat. Now. <laughs> I thought he had work. It's not a five year extension. No. I don't think you that many. Um, but what was it? And that was it. But here's my quick because I talked to Alan last night and Alan and others, and they were like, We don't we need Frimpong. I want Verts. By the way, Verts and Musiala are very, very doubtful. Ain't happening. Um, so people need to cave that one. Yeah, I if we we're gonna get anybody from Germany, it'd be rest. more likely to be Kimmich, be Kimmich, wouldn't it? And even then that's gone cold. Yeah, Kimmich I don't think seems to be way off now. I, I, I've i said it for months, Kimmich is not going to happen. That well, the exact thing I got told was Pep wants, told me put a tweet out, Pep wants Bruno Gimenez and Piquetta. 
The board want Paqueta and somebody else. Sonny. No, no, someone younger. They, they want someone like 19 to come in. Well, that would be Neves. Um, Neves, Neves, wouldn't it? Or they're a bit, we don't really want to pay 100 million quid for a 19 year old. Which then made playing a certain no, no. Other Portuguese little fella. Yeah. Who maybe. I mean, that's been my take for months, Martin. You know, I've yeah. said it on the show. You know, I've I said it on the show. That. That's it. That's how. That's how Benfica get their funds because their scouting network, one of the best in Europe. They find the next big talent, sell them on for huge money, keeps it, keeps the club moving, and they'll they'll gladly have Bernardo back in a heartbeat. And if it means. They can sell on their next big talent to get him in, still keep him on a decent wage, uh, wage bill. Then, yeah, it just it just it just makes good business to me. Yeah, so it makes sense. We've got a really good relationship, go relationship with them as well, haven't we? Yeah. So, I heard yeah. that as well. I told yeah. Musiala's using so. Yeah, the very very good relationship with us. You know, the, the money from Ruben Diaz basically kept him afloat coming out of um, COVID. I'm not a man, Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm Amanda, yeah. yeah. The general. Compact. Bit of a salute for the general. We salute you, sir. Um, listen, uh, listen. I would be gutted if Bernardo leaves. But now we've got to think here. Put your business hats on and everyone in the chat. He's contracted until 2026. He's 29 He's years old. 29. 50 million pound. If it doesn't go this summer, he goes into the last year of his contract. You're not going to get 50 million quid for him next summer. So you're looking at 25 to 30 million max. Mm, you know what I mean? And John Evans is you didn't make get that. Having that time. Yeah, I don't think you even get that after another year with him being. 30 I think no you're not gonna get that I think the fring pong one is interesting because I think we are gonna need that Carl Walker replacement um and as much as I think we all rate Rico Lewis I just think in certain games you're gonna need that pace that we that we have with Walker I mean the the rumors are that you know they're kind of Pepe's kind of keeping everything crossed for him being fit enough for, for Real Madrid. The only problem the only problem I have now is and I think the big big factor on any player who's currently at Leverkusen is now that Alonso wants to stay. Which I think is I think is fantastic for his managerial career to me, if you if you, if you ask me to be honest, because not only is what is he, what is he doing this season with that squad is absolutely remarkable. That's it's amazing. But he's willing to take them into the Champions League and see how far and how deep he can go the following season as well, too. Because but, uh, unless, again, Bayern, unless Bayern do some really, really shrewd business in the summer, I'd have to look at it right now. My early favourite for the for the Bundesliga next season is like going to be Leverkusen again. Because what Alonso is doing right now is just that it's 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 amazing football. The big question then becomes is can he do it in his in his second year, sophomore year? You know, does he bring in more players or does you know? Is he is he willing to let his big players go and then try and re, reboot and you know bring in some bring in more fantastic young players who can you know do a job and, and win win a league title for him? So I'm curious to see whether the whether the players are willing to whether Leverkusen's board is willing to let some players go to get more money, get more funds come in, or are they willing to stick with the Alonso project and see how how far they can actually go? I will well, think part. Sorry, I must play. Bernardo goes fifty million or he stays. I think from a business perspective, because what do you do if you keep him on a you keep him for another two years, you don't need to buy two midfielders this summer. And you've got to think long term as well. Yeah, like, you really have. I mean, we are starting to the age of the squad with with key players. Like we lost two key players last summer, and I think we've seen the the effects of that. I think you you have to be sensible. You just need to start letting these players go one at a time, rather than a couple at a time, because then the, the impact of on the squad is less. Especially when you bring in new talent, and especially if it is Neves, he's going to be he's he's a great player, but he's going to be young 
and he's coming into this this Manchester City squad, which it's not going to be an easy kind of him getting into the squad either. Um, I just wanted to say, Pat, on your share, I think with Leverkusen, they're going to need funds. You know, to play in the Champions League, they're going to need some more bodies. You know, it means they're going to be playing more games, high intense games. And if Joe Langer is going to stay and want to build a squad to challenge more in the Bundesliga against Bayern, then I think they're going to have to sell at least one or two big players. Yeah, yeah, look, man, that is possible too. But we've also got to look at just the reason why they got to where they are this season is because they were fantastic with their business in the transfer market. Um, sold on a lot of players for very, very good money and bought in players that replaced them and pl are playing just as good a football and they've got them for a fraction of the cost as well too. I can't see any reason why even with even with just simple, something as simple as the prize money they, they'll get from the Bundesliga and if they get any additional prize money from winning any, the other two trophies that they're in as well too, that they may be able to bolster their lineup with with with, with even more depth because they're going to be in the same situation as we are. They're going to be playing just as many games next season as well. And I you know, they get that much I'd like to think under that. another season on Alonso, they're going to want to think that they're going to try and, you know, replicate or even go one better if they can next season. So it, it's, it, I think for them, it's a good problem to have because I know for a fact that those players, will, you, 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 sorry, not know for a fact, but you want to think that those players will want to probably stick around with Alonso for another year and see how far they can actually go in the Champions League because. You look at what Leverkusen are doing this season, they're good enough to play in the, in, in the Champions League, let alone the Europa League. So for me, I just, I just, I, I just, I'm curious to see what, yeah, whether, whether they, you know, whether there is an agreement between Alonso and the board for next season, or if it is like, no, we want to sell on because we need, you know, we need extra funds to come in for future years. So it, it will be interesting to see, but you can, I can understand why I think. There will be a little bit of uh, the, maybe a little bit of a tug of war between what Alonso wants and what their board wants, but it might be a good problem to have. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Um, but I, I do think we're going to need that that Carl Walker replacement at some stage. Mm. Um, and there's not that many players out there that you could turn around and go. I'm not seeing a lot of fring pong, so I can't. I, it's one of them. I can't judge on someone I don't know about. Well, he came through our academy, didn't he? Yeah, that's what I'm not. I'll be honest, I'm not an avid watcher of uh, Leverkusen. No, but from from I think you know his time in the academy, he was rated. Um, obviously, you know, didn't you know? Yeah, he, he was sold eventually. Um, I can't remember who he sold him to. I don't think it was straight to Frimpong. I think it was Celtic for a little bit. Yeah. Um, but he certainly made a name for himself in this this side, um, and his pace is phenomenal. Um, he really is. I've I've seen I saw bits of him, um, but yeah, I, I think it's not a bad shout. There's a Carl Walker replacement. It just depends whether City are going to spend that well, money turns, now. Turns or... twenty four in December, so we can have him, we can have him for a while. Yeah, I mean Carl Walker came in at what twenty six. Well, well, this is well, well. This is an interesting thing. He was at our academy for nine years. He would he'll he'll fill the quota. Yeah, he, he would, would fill the quota. He would fill the quota. Yeah, it's like he I said. If, if if we were interested in Musiala because he spent like eight seasons at Chelsea's academy, he fits the quota. Yeah, it would make a lot of sense. Mm. Mine, yeah, I've only quiet. seen a small sample size as well too, and I don't think. I don't think he's as defensively sound as Kyle Walker, but no, just but what he offers going forward looks looks really deadly. Yeah, depends on other expenses they are. Love that team, Lena. Yeah, he classes as homegrown, went Celtic. Oh, does he class as? I didn't I actually didn't know that. Not like nine seasons in the academy. Yeah, yeah. You, I think you only need to play like three or play four. To be there four years. Four years before you're eighteen or something. Yeah. Well, before you're twenty-one, something along those lines. Oh, yeah. you the quota. Academy for? He was there for nine years. Yeah, he was. Yeah, they signed him as a what ten, nine or ten-year-old, and he was there until um just before. I can't believe that. Yeah. Definitely, definitely feels a quota. Even know. do you remember um 
uh, uh, even remember when there was talks about Aaron Moy. Aaron Moy filled the quota because he was yeah. can't remember what team he was academy at, but he was there for about at least five or six years, and they said he would have filled the he would have filled the quota. Yeah. You forget about these players sometimes, don't you? That mm. have been in the academy yeah. and and then gone off and done something else, and then you know it is amazing. Well, that's, that... uh, yeah. I'm just checking. Did um, cause we're going to wrap up in a minute. Apparently, City. I've now got um the League Cup final. Yeah, City's face. Excuse me, Leeds United in the FA Youth Cup final. They uh, Ben Wilkinson side made it through in a showpiece courtesy of a one 0 victory over Bristol City at the Joey Stadium. Super sub Ashton Muir scoring late on to ensure the progress. So there you go, City into the FA Cup Youth Final. That's all those That's not bad then, is it? Yeah, yeah. Just to throw it out there, I'm wondering why everyone was all looking today, you know, at tickets. And I think it was, from what I believe, just have a look. Um, I'm just going to go in now because I'm going to tell you now. Someone was asking me about Chelsea tickets earlier. Uh, looking at it, is anyone wanting to go to Wembley? Oh, I always want to go to Wembley. It's just getting out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the city end. There's quite a few in. There's loads left in level five. They're the £30 ones. It's £45 ones. Level two at £100. Still some available. Level one at the class one at £80. Then they've not got loads in there. Oh, yeah, they have 424 seats. Behind the goal in level one has completely gone. Completely gone. So if you want two seats together, you're basically looking at level two or level four. And the gods. Yeah. And the other thing I was looking at, people were asking about, was, is anyone going to Brighton away? I might have a cheeky little dabble at the old Brighton away. Because it's a Thursday night, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Mm, well, have a look at that. But, yeah, anyway, Aki's homegrown. Later Blues, take care, Lenny. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye, Blue Hat. Blue Hat left a little bit ago. Aki's class is homegrown with City because he was at Chelsea Academy for five years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, great win for the young lads. Uh, Foden is KDB. The player this thing good enough. I think that's just fans' opinion. You're never going to change that. My nephew got his Madrid ticket yesterday. What, home or away? I'm zooming at home. Are you going Madrid away, Pat? No, 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 no. I've got a, I've got a week of leave aside just in case we make the Champions League final. All oh, right, I thought you were going. No, 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 no. I might, I might do if if we play Munich in the semi final, I might come to Munich away. Possible, but oh, Lenny's going away. Oh, being joys, yeah. Thursday night out, yeah. That Brighton game is going to hurt. Yeah. Anyway, gentlemen, anything you want to add before we wrap? No, just thanks for everyone for sticking around. You know, it was a long and hard listen to Martin and uh, Rich and Alan earlier. I don't know how we got it through it, but we did. So thanks for sticking around. Yeah, I'm going to need a shower. I'm going to move on for 25 minutes. Yeah, you did a great yes. job. Yeah, fantastic I, job. You try and stop Rich when he's in full flow with Alan. You mute him. <laughs> you can mute him. No, I can't. No, I can't. <laughs> Listen, I don't even Mr. care. I can be right. Rock's Marshall Horsey. 
Mm -hmm. I can be wrong all day long. People got this thing that I want to be right all the time. I'm not asked. I just give my opinion. <clears throat> I don't yeah, need to be right all the bleeding time. Pat, I, I, I vote the fifth on that one. You what? I played the fifth. I don't because I'm not. I don't have. To, I give my opinion. People don't believe me. They don't believe me. I'm not bothered. Doesn't matter, mate. We're not American. Yeah. And again, I apologise if anyone got a thing about the arguing. We, you, you know, say debates can get a little bit heated, especially when you have a financial guy and then we're going into football. Very different. And please. then I apologise if anyone was American. Please don't come after us in pre-season, please. Or yeah. Whatever good old... That's is. Helen's views of America. Yeah. Like mine and Pat's. I love yeah. Americans. Or me. Well, you can come after you. I've got American family, thank you very much. I'm actually going to the States this year. I am? I am. Not, not for pre-season, I am. No, I can't do pre-season. Uh, anyway, take care, all. How about... So well, we'll professional. Be there, that's smart. I really am sorry. Uh, we'll be back Saturday night with the Crystal Palace post-match. I don't know who's available. I don't think anyone is. Um, um, we'll find out as we're going along. Um, possibly. Well, I'm doing it at night time, not day. Mm. Yeah, and then Monday one. night, we'll do something for Real Madrid. I don't know what. And then we'll be back Tuesday for the post-match for Real Madrid. And then Thursday, we'll do Luton Town or something. I don't know. Yeah, we'll Alan and Rich are available. No, we, I don't mind keeping Rich. Alan, I'm, I'm I'm selling to the lowest bidder. I'm selling Alan to the lowest bidder. <laughs> He's the Calvin Phillips of the channel. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to love that, Pat. Last <laughs> day vlog, I'm going on the coach. Uh, Can you imagine a coach with them three? Yeah. Do you know what? I would never go on holiday with Alan. I'd, I'd give Alan a wide berth. And he'd probably give I'd pay five money. grand just to not be stuck in an elevator with him. A couple of years back, I was actually at Imperial, and they've got a they've got an elevator that gets you up to the rooftop. Well, it's a really nice there. rooftop at the pub. And he said, and he said to me, he goes, like, he says, like, you're getting in. I said, no, I'm fine. <laughs> he was only going up one more. I like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I took the stairs. <laughs> well, the thing, the thing that I, I don't the fire alarm off, I don't even give a shit. <laughs> well, we're rich. I can debate about that. But when Alan says to me, the Premier League's corrupt because they all vote one way to get what they want. Yeah, which you know he's both said before, Alan. And then turns to Rich and goes, it's not corrupt if they're all voting that way. Well, you just said they're corrupt yesterday when they vote that way, Alan. But he's only doing it to agree with Rich to try and wind me up. I think people in the chat can make their own minds up. I was a bit concerned when Alan came in and he was bobbing his head. He was, he was moving around like a like one of those bobbleheads you have on a car. Anyway, we're talking like we're off air. Have a lovely me. evening, go. Smash that like button if you really enjoyed it. If you didn't, if you, if you want to subscribe, no worries. Um, I'm on Judge Mo tomorrow at 6 p.m. Uh, with Dan Potts to talk about the title race. Me and Pat were on It's LB earlier today, so go back and watch that. It's up on LB's channel. That was news to me. It was news Pat was on it. I didn't know Pat was in. Pat Pat came in and uh, hit and run me. Deal with it. Can he deal with it? Yeah, deal with it. But you were at work anyway. I know, but could have kept me there. Uh, Aussie's boss of the channel now, everyone. Right, all everyone. I should be. Get more stuff done. All right. Did he just say get more stuff done? Cheeky bastard. You might be on the side. Matter of hours, I'm plugging it here and he's Thanks, saying Pat. that. Bye, all. Good night. Bye. Bye.